Hello everyone and welcome to another Ashes Wednesday. Today is going to be a wild uh, stream for a lot of reasons. First, last week we took off, which was nice. We had a break. Mm -hmm. uh, the week before that, though, we played Ashes and we got about 30%... Yeah, Nalgene. Nalgene. Uh, sponsor, it says. Sorry. Uh, we got about 30% into a deck building session. Maybe 50%. Depends on who we you are. We did the hard stuff. The, the conjuration is the hard part. Yeah, so we, we were going through our process of how to build a deck in Ashes, uh, which is just the way we would naturally approach this game. But at the same time, we're by no means experts at like a you know high level. But it's kind of a system for going from picking your favorite Phoenix Born into actually building the deck. And then since that time, uh, Platt has been posting preview articles for Ashes Reborn uh, every Wednesday. That's right. right. And so we've had several articles come out. And now looking back, it's like, well... We couldn't can't, can't deck build with old cards. We were going to finish the deck building process. We're going to a little bit, but what we're going to do now? It's like making guac with an old avocado. It works. It'll, right? It works, but it's not as good. It's not as good. <laughs> you not as got to have the right color on the avocado. <laughs> so we're going to basically. They've shown I think the six core Phoenix Born from Ashes Reborn. We're going to each pick our favorite from that. We're going to go through the same process, kind of starting over. Uh, where we're going to go through everything and figure out what we want to play. We should do the, uh, we, we should check. Are you in a position where we can just compare the old cards to the new cards also? Uh, I know that we, yes, yes. I think we've got them where we can pop them up, right? We can definitely pop both like, of them up. I'm looking at the, all the new stuff on the table, and it's mind-blowing how different, and it's, some would say better it is. I would say that. Yeah, just a lot of little changes. So the, the first thing I have to do is uh, I'm going to sort, sort these things. Hey, where's the old cards? Get the old cards. Yeah, I'm going to do that too, but we got to do both of them. Is this is this the old cards? They're All that's the old cards. Hello, everybody. This is the closest I've ever been to you. I don't, that's probably... Not everybody watching. That's not true at all. Not true. Especially my wife. Am I right? Hey, whoa. Hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. <laughs> told you it was going to be a wild stream. Okay. Yeah. Are these sorted? They are sorted by card type. Remember? Yeah, I do remember. We had them all sorted because we were deck building. Oh, now, no. <laughs> nice. They're very sorted, actually. Uh, like S-O-R-D-I-D? -I, -D. I just pull all those cards out. Let's just have... Let's the just, whole thing? It's going to be a party. You yeah. want to put them on the table? Literally, I just... Like, so before we do this, you guys, you guys should check this out. So anybody, anybody who's concerned about the value in the Reborn Upgrade Pack, here's something you should know. My knuckles have something Look at to this. say. We're going, we're going in. <laughs> so this these, is like the core set. We we literally just printed out uh, all the previews that have happened so far, and then we're cutting them out. That's what we were doing before the stream, if you actually were able to catch that. And uh, it's a ton of cards that are happening. This is the... You want to give people that maybe don't have any clue about the Reborn and what it means and all that kind of stuff, what what's happening. Is there anybody in the chat right now? If you could just let me know. Is there anybody in the chat who's new to Ashes? Brand new? Maybe, I would, I would maybe never seen it or never played it? kind of curious about getting into Reborn, you know, seeing there's some hype around this thing, uh, and just kind of uh, unfamiliar with the, the game as a whole. I would love to know that, personally. Um, well, and if you're, like to know if you're watching this back later, I would also like to know if uh, you were, upon watching this video, either new or pretty new to the entire Ash experience. Because that's, that's always the weird thing about these live streams, is like, there's everyone watching right now, which, if you click on an Ash stream, you're probably watching when, you know, you probably knew what was going on, but at the same time, who knows? We're currently at 135 is my count, people. So if we can do a quick ratio, look at this. There's a there's a lot of you guys out there. We're welcome welcome to the stream. Uh, Siggy 2021 says I played one game once about two years ago. Clearly, it made an impression. Uh, Adam, leave it. <laughs> Me, Keith H says yes. Chris's gaming table, I am. Uh, Matthew Nupp, noob here since the last 30 days. Tom Hickey, I've never played, but I just bought the core set and subscription to jump in. That's what I'm talking about. August Katana is new. Coconut Monkey says, I'm not new, but pitch it to me anyways, Steven. <laughs> uh, Ethusium says, I'm not really like brand new, but very small amount of games, like five-ish under the belt. Anisha Cat, Anesthesia Cat saying, hi, I'm watching in 2042. If that's true, would you please let me know how things turned out? Uh, Daniel Carlson says, no, can't say that. See, you play a little. Uh, Ray Ray says, last stream of Ashes, you guys told me to get all the old stuff, and so I did, and I don't regret it. That's a great idea. See, because what you're going to get, Ray, here's the thing. Uh, again, the table. So the upgrade pack is going to be this. And that's the first thing coming through the subscription. actual cards. And then anything in your, if you have your whole, the whole old collection, you take these new cards, you replace the old cards with the new versions of the cards, and then you're done. And you got the whole thing. 
Now, if you don't buy all the old products, the upgrade pack is a bunch of new cards, but then you'll still need to buy the Reborn expansions and the Reborn core set and all of that. So it, it's how you want to slice it. There's really no wrong way to do it. It's obviously. also worth pointing out the Plat Hat, the uh, original core set is gone now on Plat Hat's website. You can find it somewhere else. You can still pick mm -hmm, it up and mm -hmm. start playing. Um, There's probably but, some retailers that don't even know this is happening. They're probably discounted to like 20 bucks. You, you might be able to find it. randomly floating around. Um, but the... Uh, reality is they've put up for pre-order basically the Reborn uh, starter, which is apparently expected in November, December, which is cool. Okay. And then the first thing to the subscription is hopefully going to happen sometime this year. The old upgrade pack, yeah. Mm. It might happen around the same time. Guess we'll see. The Narindal says, former Magic player who bought the whole game about three weeks before it died. I've played all of five games. <laughs> I'm pretty new. Well, hey, this is great news for you then. You're, you're, you, this is great because uh, now all those cards are going to be way more useful. Also, what's magic? Just kidding. Magic. Uh, Andrew McBride, 88, says, not a clue what this game is about. Well, you're about to get pitched on it. He said, I'm just here because you guys cover good games. Well, that's so nice. Thank you. Well, this one's quite special, honestly, because we're partnering with the publisher of Plat Hat Games. That's why it's called Ashes Reborn. This is a game that came out originally in 2015, I believe. Um, yeah, I think do you know where the Seaside Raven is? Yes, right here, uh, close to me. I just, I literally just had the pile. I was touching you, it right here. Uh, it's it got, it's gotten better. Yeah, of course. And I ran the, the deck just for that thing. Uh, uh, so the publisher, we work with them. Ashes Reborn, real yeah. quick. Um, we have a subscription. You can sign up, and basically this game's going to stay in print as long as enough people are signed up for that. And that's on our website. It's the PDP model. Player-driven production. Player-driven production. Yeah. You and guys have enough interest in it, it keeps getting me. Yeah, so it's kind of a minimum viable audi audience situation. As long as enough people are signed up, they're going to keep making it. We're going to keep shipping it to you. Uh, so you can sign up for that. We'll be playing as well in deck building and stuff. We've done a lot of videos in the past month or two on Ashes. So th if you're brand new and want to learn how to play, those might be good places to start because we're not going to start with a gameplay video. It's going to be deck building here. The beauty of the plan is in its simplicity, ultimately. You want the products? We send them to you. They make them, we Lan see Lanky's saying apparently Amazon has the base game. Oh, if good. you really want to get it. So you can pick you that up, get us a subscription. Give some money to old Bezos. He's got about $28 million billion. He needs Isn't a it like $200 billion now? Yeah, but it, like you that. know, valuation, et cetera. He's going yeah. to Mars. It, it's also fake money. That's one thing. That's it. <laughs> I was having a conversation this week with my brother about that, but it's like essentially... His house doesn't look like it's bought with it, fake well, money. Well, yeah, that's real money. <laughs> but basically, you know, his value is his share. He doesn't like, have that money in a bank account. Right. He would have to sell the company. He's been... Uh, you know, leading. We'll do it. It's always interesting to say, like, Get the company the he show. built. I know that's, like, almost controversial because it's yeah. like, well, actually, the thousands of people working at Amazon built this company. Of course. Uh, but, you know, nomenclature, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, they're getting paid very well. Alex Becker says... I don't uh, know. <laughs> give a little office take there. Uh, I'm watching because TC is streaming. I'm not super interested in Ashes. Well, thanks, Alex. You're just interested in us. Well, that's, a, that's awesome. We're also a player-driven production model as, as people. <laughs> we, we literally yeah. are player-driven. <laughs> it's not like production. It's just player-driven, uh, you know, existence, Link, you rat started playing two weeks ago. Oh, uh, nice. Nick Struble saying, I never tried it. Always interested based purely on the box art. Now that I've seen the gameplay, I can't get my hands on it soon enough. Siggy saying, I really wanted to get into it, but it was pretty much dead here already. I'm hoping with 1.5, and when COVID drops off, we can maybe build a community around it. Perfect idea. Uh, Justin Derringer started playing last month after the PDP stream. JD Haynes, I'm new to Ashes entirely due to Team Covenant. Uh, Keith McDaniel, of course, very new, only five games. I think I've heard from Keith already. Um, so I'm going to go now. I'm going to miss a lot of the chats here. I'm just going to go to the bottom. Uh, Got to catch up. Ooh, look at this. Daniel Carlson, Thor beat expert absorbing man on five turn solo on the fifth turn. Amazing. Well, that's an that's a achievement. Amazing. <clears throat> Linky Rat finally saying, uh, so glad to give more money to you guys. Your streams cost me flesh and blood, Marvel Champions, and now Ashes. Wow. That's, that's the, like, triple crown. Yeah, triple crown. That thing's going to win the derby. All right. So I'm just getting here's this the sorted. Pitch. Here's what you need to know about Ashes, ultimately. Uh, if you see me looking over here, I'm looking at the monitor. I also kind of like it. It makes it feel like a, almost an informal situation. You know how sometimes when you're watching a documentary and they're shooting the side of the person's face? Uh, absolutely. For some reason, that, that feels good. That's a very uh, common, like, stylistic. Yeah. Choice. So it's very similar to me, like, all right, here's the pitch for Ashes. And you see how that, see how that changes things as opposed to me looking <laughs> at it? It's a you're, wild you're, morning. You're, I was going to say, you're feeling frisky. It's, after, it's the break. My batteries are recharged. Uh, you're just like... I've got another two weeks before I hate life again. You may... <laughs> no, you take another break. I am, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to hiking in Pariah Canyon here next We're week. We're looking at the schedule, and it's like, wait a second. Yeah. After or that week after. After that week off, I was like, 
oh, I, this was nice. I'm gonna, I should maybe try to do this again. And then <laughs> I was like, oh wait, Steven's already got it scheduled. Man, he's a genius. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be five, uh, wait, where five you, days of solo streaming for you, isn't it? Are where you are you going? That? Well, to Pariah Canyon, Utah, Arizona. I can't remember which the, one it is. Desert Canyon hike. It it might be five days of solo. That was the original plan, but there's uh, some some move stuff happening in the air. Uh, moving buildings. Straight, yeah, et yeah. We're we're relocating. Yes, to um, San Antonio. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> just another. Just right down the Tulsa, road. Yeah. But uh, depending on how that goes and when it's down and up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there there's going to be solo streams involved. Yeah, probably five days of Middle Earth CCG. I mean, uh, you know, Marissa McConnell <laughs> on Facebook. Where do you follow the chat? We follow uh, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube on the chat. And if you want to get into the party, it's it's on YouTube. Yeah, we, uh, we've been on YouTube forever, so a lot of people on YouTube. That's where we definitely have our, the most people watching uh, these streams, so that's where it's most active in that way. But the, the stream quality is apparently the best on Twitch. Oh, of course it is. And then Facebook Twitch is, is designed to look good. Facebook is really, the role of the Facebook stream is so that people see it and then go, go oh, I'm going to go to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Get off that platform, right? Um, okay, here's what Ashes is about. Here's, here's what you need to know. So. Um, it's you know it's in the vein of, of what you would expect from your more traditional uh, training card game systems. <laughs> I just realized that. Look at that shot of that giant stack. <laughs> your card game system. So basically, you're you're controlling a character known as a Phoenixborn. Uh, these are kind of like uh, Ooh, give me know, the theme. The new gods of of this world. Um, Zach, you probably know more about it somehow than I do because you're a theme boy now, and I've, I've never. I've, read about it, I've really. always been a theme person. I yeah. just I don't think it shows up as much as my tendency. Well, to it just called. was consuming twenty thousand Star Wars books, so I just assumed it was the only thing you actually. Yeah. It was always about theme. It was just that you were you were in one property only. Expressing expressing mm-hmm. it. So the Phoenix Born, they have like powers, right? Magical powers and whatnot. And like essentially, the theme is set up to be uh, they're they're trying to defeat the other Phoenix Born to be the last Phoenix Born. It's so a Highlander situation. Uh, yes, and gain all the powers because uh, you know there's apparently like a, almost like a shared energy. And like, they should go talk to the Sky Tear uh, folks about maybe uh, maybe the Phoenix Born want to want to grab the Sky Tear and we could have a mashup. A That'd clash. be crazy. Can, can you imagine cool? that crossover happening? Yeah, like all your Phoenix Born get made into Sky Tear models. You can use in that. That would be sick. Oh, you know what would be super sweet? What's that? Either direction. That would it, yeah. it would be awesome to have the models, but then it would be also awesome to get a Phoenix Born deck that was instead one of the Sky. Sky tier characters. Well, Woo. let's make it happen. Time Credit. knots. I said right. Colby's on chat, so he can he can make it happen right now. So the uh, the ultimate you know idea is you're controlling a, an avatar, right? A a, a big awesome uh, hero essentially. Like and, as an example, Mayoni. Mayoni. Pull Mayoni up on the screen. Yeah, this Mayone, is a character, uh, one of my favorites. Actually, Symboli showed up Symboli's, on the screen. Symboli, yeah, and, and Symboli's a great, great Phoenix born. Also, I mean, it's notable in Ashes too. They wrecked it when it comes to just diversity and like representation and stuff in this game. They are crushing it. A lot of great characters across uh, every spectrum. So um, that's one of the notable things too. Is it's just like it's just fresh. There's a lot that everybody can like in this thing, just theme wise. Uh, and then the art's beautiful. The art style's beautiful. It's it's almost watercolors. Has that feel? You can see it obviously on the cards, um, but obviously a lot of care taken in the art and the art style. The direction is all very much in line with itself. A lot of times you'll have games that have art that kind of has a pretty vast uh, array of of styles. This is all very much stylistically in the same pocket. Done a very good job there. Um, so the game looks great. You control a Phoenix Born, and you, the Phoenix Born you choose is going to bring in like one, maybe two cards that that Phoenix Born has to have, uh, and that's kind of their signature cards, right? It's got the little face on the bottom. So if you look at like Seaside Raven, we can pull up Seaside Raven. Um, you see the little uh, little icon in the bottom right there. You got a little face down there. That tells me that that goes with uh, Saraya Guideman or Saria Guideman. Uh, who we can also pull up, the Phoenix born of Lighthouse Bay. Uh, and my love of lighthouses and ravens makes me really a fan of her. Uh, so that's that's a necessary include in that deck. And then aside from that, everything else in the card pool is essentially you can build with. So it's a wide open deck building experience. Side note, signature cards are not required. Are you serious? They're just only playable by that character. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. But if you ever really have a Phoenix born where you don't want to play the signature cards, Somebody's made a mistake. Either well, the deck builder or the designer. I mean, on like as an example, um, that's a bold thing to say. <clears throat> Ma- Mayoni's signature card is Summon Silver Snake, so she's the only the only Phoenix Born that can play the Silver Snakes, which got an update and recently. I'm excited about that. But 
She doesn't have to play the Silver Snakes. Okay. So if you didn't want to do that Conjuration route, it, it allows that. Okay, all right, that's fair. I actually never knew that. Um, because I always choose my Phoenix form based on their signature card. So, like, of course, I want yeah, to well, take why it, not? you know? Like, why wouldn't I? Worth pointing out, too, I see the card popping up. Um, we've added, if if a card is an updated, reborn version of a card, it's got a gold border around it when it pops up on the screen. Not going to look like that in real life. Yeah, so, Maybe like, uh, if we pull up the old Summon Silver Snake, you'll see it. It'll just have it without the gold, oh, and it's the old text. Flex in the production team. Yeah, there it is. See? I, I have total faith <laughs> in the team. Uh, Nothing but faith. Unlike, unlike others in the room. Anyways, uh, so anytime you see that gold board, that means it's the reborn version of the card. So no, you got the signature cards. You can include them or not. 99% of the time, you're probably going to include them. Choose your Phoenix Born, and then you build your deck as normal. Uh, one of the cool things about this one is that uh, there's some limitations on how big a board state can get, which is one of the better things about the game. Uh, so like uh, some things, have, they have a battlefield stat, where that's like the maximum number of things that they can summon to the board. Uh, usually that's in like the three to six range. Um, so unlike some games where you will end up with a board state that has 20 things out and then nobody knows what strategically is the right decision, it stays pretty tight, pretty tidy. Um, all of the stat lines, attack, life, recover on the creatures is very, very tight as well. You don't have like 20 versus one. It's usually like anywhere from zero to four is kind of the, the range. You've got some fives and sixes that are pretty big. Um, but it's it's all very, it just feels very tidy, the way that it's all uh, constructed. And then also you have uh, spell boards, and that's the main way that you summon creatures. So you actually have to play spells from your hand onto the board, and then your opponent gets to go, and it's that back and forth action system. And then after that, you can actually summon a creature from that spell. So it's really nice that, uh, I don't know, some of you might have played Star Wars Destiny, uh, other, other you go, I go games. Uh, Netrunner kind of had this, but it had more, more clicks uh, until you pass the turn. Uh, but you're, you're generally able to see what your opponent is planning to do, and then you have a chance to respond to that before they get to do it, uh, which is one of the things I always look for in games that I think is really nice in terms of building tension and creating uh, strategic choices. Zach might play uh, Summon Silver, Silver Snake Spellbook down, and then I know, before that snake comes out, hmm. I know that, okay, he might summon it next thing he does, yeah. and I've got one action until that happens, so I've got to make sure that uh, I'm ready for whatever he's broadcasting. And then the action system itself is really clever. You get one main action every turn. You also get one side action every turn if you want. Uh, and side action is generally like smaller things that you use to kind of like maybe lightly increase your odds or give yourself a little bit better chance at, at hitting a certain magic type that you need, those kinds of things. Uh, Gameplay is pretty fast, about 30 minutes, uh, as low as 15, you know, once you really know the system and the, and the games are, are coming together nicely. And then a couple of things that are, are notable is uh, you actually choose your starting hand, five cards, no repeats. Um, so you don't have to worry about First mulligans or, or getting hosed out of a strategy that, that's really important to you. You can make sure that the way that you want your deck to play can literally start the game because you, you have your first five cards literally in your hand. Uh, and then magic types. You decide uh, once you're during the deck building process what kind of magic you want to yield with this Phoenix Born. Uh, some of them have essentially like signature cards that if you include, they're going to necessitate a certain school of magic. But otherwise, there's what, six uh, schools, four of the mains, and then two were introduced, and there's about to be a seventh, which is time, I believe. Let's just pull um, out the colors. And they relate to your dice. And so depending on the schools of magic you want to play, you pull that many dice out. You get 10 dice yeah, uh, that six, you bring to the board. And you can see them here. If we zoom in on the board, here's some dice. Look at these. Summer. Each of the colors, uh, each die has uh, three basics, two of the middle value and one of the... Uh, the big value. What was it called? Uh, power class side. and power and basic. Uh, so you've got nature magic, you've got illusion magic, you've got charm magic, you've got sacrifice, ceremonial. scary, ceremonial, ceremonial magic. <laughs> the goats. Uh, you've got sympathy magic, you've got divine magic, and all these dice share one symbol, which is a basic symbol. Uh, and that's just basically like, you know, you can use that for most things, cantrips, etc. And then whenever you start getting into the more advanced symbols on these dice, certain cards will necessitate that you have those symbols showing and then you cash those dice in to play the things from your hand. So the resource system is not about, you know, building up, uh, you know, plus gold or whatever on your side of the board. You get 10 dice every turn, you roll them in, whatever side they're on, you can meditate to change their sides, and then you use those dice as your resources for the turn. One of the cool things about it, too, is that, you know, you might take five illusion die, 
three sympathy die and two ceremonial die. You can really decide how you want to play the game. And a, a deck build is so wide open with that kind of a system um, that it really just allows you to express the concept that you want to the max, which yeah. is super, super fun. Well, and I think the combination of what you just said, a few things you just said, uh, is really one of the signatures of this game. So the first five means that you have the opening hand you want. Uh, you start with 10 dice, these are your resources, and every turn, every player gets 10 resources. So there's no building or ramping uh, in terms of resource curve. Everyone always has those 10 resources starting the turn. And then the combination of those two factors means that from the first turn, you really feel like your character. So if you want to play certain units or spells down from the very start of the game, that's what you can do. So it's, it's literally one of the things I remember the original designer Isaac saying in that interview we did a few weeks back was like, he wants you to start the game feeling awesome and like your character is supposed to feel. And it's about those two characters at their peak fighting, not who can build to the peak and then win the game, which is yeah. how a lot of games go, right? Is you're building your resources to get to the point where you're awesome. And if you don't get to the point where you're awesome, then your opponent just gets awesome and then beats you. And it's usually right as soon as you feel like you fully, right as soon as you realize the stack concept, the game is over. Uh, so you don't actually get to like experience the joy that comes from multiple turns of like you being fully realized. Um, much like real life. <laughs> so uh, do you have, do we have the cards organized in any kind of a way? Do you want to just pick a Phoenix Born and, and take a look? I want to look at the new Soraya uh, Guideman plus Seaside Raven uh, comparison. Yeah, because so... I was obsessed with this. Now, here's the old one. I love, so let's look at 1.0 Soraya. Is it, does anyone know if it's Soraya or Saria? What would you call this? Or Sarah? I think it's... Saria. Saria. Saria? So... <laughs> I think it's Saria. Okay. Well, two opinions make a right. Uh, I Greg, don't know. Greg, asking any idea for the uh, launch date? Or I think like November, December area is where it's looking like right now. Yep. Um, okay, so let's look at some of the changes, and this will give us an idea of, of what we should expect. This card art is gorgeous, man. Yeah. It's so, so what's good. the what's the old one do? So the old one, one point you see it on the screen there. Um, Hearts pull is the ability, and it's the it's the same on the on the new card. You can draw a card. If you do, you may choose a target player to discard one card off the top of their draw pile. If you pull up the 2.0 version, it looks like this is an unchanged card. It looks like the exact same. You may draw one card. If you do, you choose a target player to discard a card off the top of their draw pile. So Soraya is unchanged. Don't even need to, to care about it, unless I'm missing something insane. Now what has changed, and much to my liking, is the Seaside Raven. Yep, has not changed. So if you look at 1.0 Seaside Raven, this is her signature card. Seaside Raven is literally the reason that I love this Phoenix Born, uh, because it's a just statically good unit. Now 1.0 says battle advantage. When it's in battle, it inflicts its damage for other units without battle advantage. It's a three attack, two life, so it rolls in there. And if it's attacking or countering, it's going to do its damage first, which a lot of times means it won't take any retaliatory damage. It's a fast raven, uh, Seaside Raven. She's in the lighthouse. It's great. Where's the new Seaside Raven? You got the new so, Seaside Raven? Yep. Get the 2.0. Let's get 2.0 on the screen here. 2.0 Seaside Raven. Ashes Reborn. Raven Reborn. Check this out. We lose Magic Guard, which was the old uh, Seaside Raven. Couldn't be affected by spells. And what did we gain? Prey... Two. What's this mean? It means the greatest thing in all card games. It does something when it comes into play. And what it does is oh, it destroys three. a target unit with a life value of two or less when it comes into play. Put that in your put that in your thinking. So you hat put it in a play second. and it just destroys the unit that cost that with two life or two less. Two life or less. Is it printed two life? Probably. I'm just asking the real question. It says with a life value of two or less. I think if it's modified it would it would it would prey it. Can you believe that? It's really and good. Just imagine a unit. And, is, and a unit is an ally or a conjuration. Right? Comes into play, destroys a unit with two life or less, then has battle advantage, does three damage before it gets retaliated against. If there was ever a card, I, you could pull this out of my brain as the perfect Ashes card for me. I love perfect. I'm so in wow. love with it. Yes. It's just fundamentals. So you're saying that they nailed it. And now here's the thing I think you need to keep in mind. All right. Is that we're getting rid of Magic Guard and we're gaining destroy a unit. And I think that's probably indicative of what we should expect for a lot of the changes that are going on in the game. Any of the, the previous abilities that said can't do stuff to this thing or can't 
Like the we're getting rid of cannot. I think that's the main thing. Like anything that's telling me I get to remove your die fully, mm -hmm. so you can't like cast spells with it, is gone. Anything that's saying uh, you can't cast spells on this unit is probably gone, or at least uh, minimized. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a lot more play and counterplay rather than just like these board states where it's like, I can't be touched. Yeah. Uh, which in any game is a problem, right? Yeah. So I, I love this change, and I love what it means for the game. Reacting to what your opponent does instead of stopping them from doing what they want to do is a very, that's way better. That's way better. Did the summon, summon spell change at all? I don't know. That's right here. 1.0. Summon Seaside Raven. No, they're the exact same. All right, let's get rid of the new one. So, man, how great is that? Oh, Zach, I'm going to wreck you with this Phoenix Born now. Okay, so I do have... Here's the thing, right? I, I have these organized uh, in a, a reasonable manner, which is good. So I'm thinking we do exactly what we did last time, which is we're going to go through the uh, conjurations and see which ones you think match uh, something you would want to be doing. Okay, and then, let's build on then. Yeah, so we're. I let's think we just going. go, and as we go, we'll pull up a lot of the reborn cards because we're going to be going through those just like we would anything else. And so um, anything from the core set is what we have access to on the reborn that we know. Is uh, this all core set? As far as we know, uh, okay. I think that's the case. But I'm can not we just take a second out. actually and look at that summon masked uh, wolf? Yeah. Because I know that there's some Noah fans out there that are s seemingly super pleased that this unit is actually playable now. Um, and I want to see what exactly makes it so. So, give it, you got that old, you got the old Noah wolf man. Uh, actually, John, if you just Is pull it a it signature up, card? That's yes. the Phoenix form of their signature card. Yes, okay. Let's get that 1.0 mass wolf up here. What's it? What's up, Dave? Afternoon. Ooh, I get to look at coal too. I was a big coal fan back in the day as well. Old rust. Yeah, I just like swords. I just like the fundies, right? I think maybe I'm just an aggressive person. You wouldn't think that by looking at me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, no red moon. Let's see if anything's changed. We're gonna look at this mass wolf. Guys, it's unchanged. What are you talking about? Okay, hold on. Let me see if the summon is different. Ooh, yes, it's cheaper. All right, summon Masked Wolf 1.0. Let's pull up the book, the spell book. Uh, there we go. So you see the original version is a mask and a basic symbol. Uh, you place one on the battlefield, and it says focus one. If you, you may change the activation cost to just a wolf head. Okay, so it gets cheaper if you focus it. Okay. Let's look at Summon Masked Wolf Reborn. Now this one actually costs, oh my gosh, and it's a side action. These are all such important changes. So it's going to a side action that costs a basic instead of a main action that then costs a basic to cast. Wow, that's clever. Uh, so this version, you need a mask and a side action to cast it, no basic, place it on the battlefield. Different focus, too. If you spent any wolf uh, dice, die, wolf head dice, to activate this spell, you may take an additional side action this turn. I understand. Look at the difference. Okay. This is so clever. This is so entirely clever. So this used to be play Summon Mass Wolf 1.0, play it down as a main action. Then if you focus it, you can spend a wolf die to, to play the card to cast the wolf instead of two dice, basically, to cast the wolf. Mm -hmm. This one is now coming in as a side action and a basic, so mm -hmm. it's more expensive to get on the table, side action. But if it's focused, if you spin the wolf, then you get to do another side action, which can then be summoning the new masked wolf. So if it's focused, your entire turn can be side action, side action, play the summon masked wolf, put this, the masked wolf into play. Huh. I love it. It's so much faster. Yeah. And of course that's going to do what you do. Which is cool because the wolves, I feel like, should be fast like that. They should be fast, And they show, right? up, in a, they show up in a pack. And then you got, and, and who knows what you could do with two side actions in a turn. You could string together a whole lot of nonsense with that. That seems way more fun, right? Well, now I want to play Noah. Well, you, we can do what we did last time where you have a couple that you're pulling cards for. Oh, go. if you spin it and activate, you take an additional side action. So that me actually, that means you can just get two out immediately. 
So you got to spend the uh, the wolf head to activate the spell, not play the spell book. Yeah. Take an additional side action. So you can either but do you can two wolves. Or you can do a wolf and something else. And a wolf and something else. Mm -hmm. But dropping two, two one mass wolves onto the battlefield for side actions only is sick. Yeah. Sick. You guys see that Paul Rudd thing about talking to people about mass? <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Super funny. Sick. We have to eat this, bro. <laughs> All right, anything else that catches your eye that you want to investigate before we get into build mode? Oh, I, I need to, to show my Phoenix Born that I am going to be excitedly playing. Uh, you have that stack. Let me grab this back from you. Yeah, that's great. You're right on it, bass. Bass like boss. Sea bass. You can just like flood and attack all of a sudden. These wolves, these mass wolves are amazing too. All right, let's let's Beautiful. check out. Yeah, get me excited about the, Mayoni. The OG. All right, so let's pull up Old Mayoni. Old Mayoni. Old Mayoni. Uh, the Viper Queen. Battlefield three, Spellboard four. So three Battlefield in the old game was miserably bad because once you fill up your Battlefield, they wouldn't touch your units. I always thought it was quite fair, crazy. Yeah. Uh, four Spellboard, twenty two health, and then she has an old ability. She can spend a basic. Uh, after you declare attackers and you exhaust her, one of the attackers gets plus two to their attack value. So she can just so she's a buffer, the yeah. basically. Yeah. And then her signature card was uh, the old Summon Silver Snake. Don't uh, step on snake. And the whole idea here, action to put in, action to use, you have to spend a frog and a snake to put a thing out. If it's focused, the snake comes in with a status token. If it's focused twice, you get two status tokens. We hold the old Silver Snake. Uh, the whole idea here is the attack value is equal to X, where it's the number of status tokens on here. And then every time you defeat one of your opponent's units, it basically eats the unit and gets stronger and gets a status token. So if it's focused, you start with a couple, and then as you defeat units, uh, you know, it gets bigger and scarier. Which is, uh, you know, building up to this big giant snake thing. So a lot of things change. Let's pull up the reborn Mayoni. And so her health goes down to 20. Her battlefield goes up to four, nice little tweaks, mm -hmm. and her spell board goes up to five, so a little wider. Ooh, okay. Then instead of the strike action, she's got this command strike, which is a side action, exhaust, two basics, choose an unexhausted unit you control, deal damage to a target unit equal to the chosen unit's attack value. Oh, that's so good! So instead of plus two, which could have been used against a Phoenix Born, you can just strike with one of your units without having to strike with them. Mm -hmm. So that means the snake, as an example, could gobble something up, and snap, it hasn't been exhausted snap. yet. Here's the, here's, uh, that's all fine. I'm sure I'll hate it eventually as you. You're going to uh, really hate it. me with it. But look at, look at Mayoni, uh, look at Mayoni 1.0. This is, this is the, there's a philosophical principle at work. The, the original, or old Mayoni as you called her. The, uh, the, the original. So you notice how that ability is just a lot of text without the symbols that we are used to seeing in the game and like, easily understood triggered uh, abilities. And it says after a player has declared attackers, so now we have to have a timing window for after players have declared attackers that has to open, and then we've got to deal with all the and different passives that might. And who has there, and back and forth, and all that stuff. And then you, you got the one guy at the store who's like knows the rules perfectly and is like wrecking you because you did it wrong. Um, I think they're trying to get rid of all of that, <laughs> honestly. So this is a literally do a side action, it resolves, you're done. Yeah, done. No floating yeah. information, no triggers to keep track of, no passive abilities. Absolutely. Etc. Now let's look at the Reborn Summon Silver Snake. So still an action to play, still a Mayoni signature card, still an action, an exhaust, a snake, and a frog, same mm -hmm. cost. Place a Silver Snake onto your battlefield. If it's focused, you place a status token on the, that Silver Snake. If it's focused twice, same thing. Spell Guard, all, literally the same card. Do you think that that's supposed to symbolize a snake eating a frog to like grow into a Silver Snake? Probably. Cool. Because you don't have frogs around to be the snake's friends. That's right. Uh, all Snakes right, eat then frogs. we get the updated silver snake, which is where all the magic is going to happen. So one of the most important changes, if you look at the bottom left corner, it says one. That's the maximum number of that conjuration that can be in play. On your you only get board. one snake? So you only have one snake. But Mayoni's ability lets you use that snake's attack against a unit mm -hmm. and the, as a side action. So then you can clear the way for the snake to get in there and you know bite the phoenix one. But this is the most important thing. Still the X attack life. X attack and then the four life and the three recover, but it has consumed now. Look how much less text that is. Hold on, can we? Yeah, can we get? Are we on two? Let's go to one. Go back to uh, original go, old silver snake. Go to old silver snake. Look at Look that at block. The text. Yep, covering up that art. All right, so remember how much text is there. Let's go to let's go to the gold reborn border. Let's go reborn. Look at oh my gosh, such so, so much cleaner. 
uh, consume, and the, the rules are even cleaner. After an, a, a unit an opponent controls is destroyed, place a status token on this unit. So, boom. used to, I had to destroy your unit for him to eat it, basically. Ooh. Now, if you have a unit that's destroyed, period, mm -hmm. from any effect, any ability, yours or mine, he gets stronger. Done. So, man, you can literally side action. You can use the snake's attack against something to destroy it. It gets stronger. If that clears your last blocker, now the snake's going to sneak right in and get your phoenix. Snap block. it. Yeah. Uh, good point here from uh, from Joseph Kane. The window still exists. That is 100% true. There's always going to be, like, when things resolve windows. But the whole point of this is anything that could be converted into the standard, like, action, side action system is, is being converted. Um, so, like, Silver Snake's a good example of, like, we need something to happen when the snake eats. And it, it's got to eat after something's destroyed. And there's really not, I mean, you could put like a status token on it and then take a side action to convert it into a plus life. It, it, but again, you, that window would always be there. So it's going to necessitate some times when things happen and framework potential of the game. Uh, but I think the key is just minimizing the, the bloat and the, the load, the cognitive load that's, that's having to keep track of when all these things are happening, uh, which is a great thing to do. Yeah. OK, so I'm definitely playing Maoni and the Silver Snakes. Yeah. It's my band and, name. Uh, wait, what's the life on those guys? Four. Oh. With a recover of three. So I can't raven them, huh? Not these guys, but you will be able to raven my favorite units. The Gilders? That's right. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so what we did last time is knowing the Phoenix Point, if you want, you can have two Phoenix Point out. That's what we were doing last time. Remember we had the two people and we were putting cards in I don't want to. I just want Saria. Okay, so we're going to stick with Saria. And are these all, yep, Phoenix Point. Oh my gosh, the Seaside Raven also went to one. You can have one raven. Oh my gosh, I used to be able to have two. So if you want um, the stuff that you can't have, we'll end up putting the real one behind the sleeve. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But everything that's extra or that's getting redone, I'm going to put in this stack over here. All right. So things that you definitely don't need. So uh, don't I don't need those. Copy of that. Yeah. We cut that out for nothing? Yep. These are Noah's cars. Don't need those. OK. I uh, don't need this old seaside raven. Yeah, we, I'll right. put that in the stack. Here we go. You have one for the yep for the card back. Summon uh, seaside raven is is standard. Yep, nothing fancy there. And then there's some old stuff from the old uh, deck build that could could matter. Okay, so the first thing I went ahead and sorted all these cards that I would like to do is I want to. Also, there's a question. I think you've asked it a few times here. I saw it come through. I just haven't had a good chance, Alex, here to address this. Alex Doubleday, great question. I think PDP is a fantastic idea, but quick question about international supporters and honestly just general supporters. If Reborn ends up in local stores, how do you account for the potential loss in PDP subs when the demand goes local? There's a lot to this. There's actually a lot to, to unpack with this. So first of all, uh, even if local stores decide to get involved, build community, et cetera, I don't see the majority of demand for this game going to local store product sales, and very specifically product sales. I think if you're a local store and you are investing in ways to build communities that don't require you to sell products to be successful, I think that's the way of the future. We've been saying this for literally three years. We're working on it currently in our own store. It's not a secret. If it works, copy it, mimic it, et cetera. That's where we think the industry is going to go. Um, so our ultimate reality, this is why Ashes didn't really you know, work the first time. There's a number of reasons. But uh, we've seen it in all the competitive LCG dueling style games where you have uh, essentially fixed releases that are releasing once a month. And uh, they're like 15 bucks. And you, know, you, you, as a store, decide, do I want to stock this? Do I want to stock the Magic Booster box? Right. And so as you're month after month after month, do I want to stock this SKU and this SKU and this SKU? It's just not a super appetizing game for retailers. We've talked about this for a long time. If you listen to our podcast, you talk about this forever. Um, so I hope that locally community generation and sustaining is happening. That, that needs to be the case, um, whether it's player driven or uh, retailer driven. But I don't think that necessarily means that product sales are going to go to the retail chain in such a degree that like the PDP subscription that's getting to the majority of players here in the States, uh, North America, is going to then suffer uh, a lot of losses from it. I think those two ecosystems can exist side by side in a very productive way, particularly where like retailers don't feel like toes are being stepped on because they don't necessarily want to carry the products anyway. Uh, but then we can get the products into players' hands, and that can drive people to stores to play 
and then hopefully stores that have figured out how to make that worth their time, either by cafe model, selling coffee, beer, sandwiches, et cetera, table space rentals, um, you know, the, all these kinds of ideas that are kicking around in the industry right now, um, that that will be a boon to them to have players that are interested in this, that we're creating, you know, that kind of uh, awareness and excitement, that they can then benefit from that on the local level. And that benefits all players because a community gets established in a much more real and physical way. And then aside from that, I think there's a lot of people that will play this like we're playing it. Two people, four people, et cetera. You, you go to each other's houses, you go to Denny's, you go to the coffee shop, whatever it is. Um, so we, we think it'll all exist together. If all that demand shifts locally and, and the subscription fades away, the game won't get made and the end, right? I mean, so we'll just have to find that balance and figure out how that ultimately goes. Um, OK, so hopefully that answers your question. And we, we did a whole podcast on it. It was like episode 145 like or 46. Every podcast has essentially been on that. Yeah, it's been slowly building to that moment. OK, so first things first, I'm the realist. Uh, good. We have our our signature conjuration. Yeah. It's cool yeah, that we have good. both Let's characters. Zoom in. Let's deck both characters that are here a little bit. So I have Maoni here, and she's upside down. So I'm going to turn those around. Oh, that's very Mayoni nice. has silver snakes, and they're just going to be sitting here. And then we're literally the first step is going to be going through Maoni as an example. The new Maoni has a battle of the four. So I have to decide if, again, like her signature card is summon silver snake, which is a spell that goes on your board and you can keep summoning the silver snake over and over again throughout the game uh, but i can only have one silver snake out you can only have one seaside ra raven out so but the focus we have to basically figure out what other s units and spells do we want to go with this phoenix born and mayoni has this ability where sh her units can basically you can side action to use their attack on a unit as a side action without exhausting them so things i'm looking for before we even start going through all these conjurations and units that we can play uh, other big attack units, right? So mm -hmm. even having one big attack unit I can just put down to like deal with a problem. And then the other thing is anything that's going to mess with status tokens, because my snakes, to be good, need status tokens. Mm -hmm. Another type of card I'm going to be looking for, because this, the silver snake gets bigger with every unit that's destroyed. So cards that I can mm. play to destroy a unit out of hand. Or that destroy themselves to do something good. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. You get it. What yeah. about you? Any thoughts on yours before uh, we dive I'm just going to run the good cards. This is kind of my plan. Uh, Seaside Raven is a great uh, conjuration. I think I will need an answer for big units, right? And I, I have to ask the question, how many summon Seaside Raven spellbooks am I going to run? So there's a world where you mm. focus it down once, you, know, you've, you summon a Seaside Raven, you use it, it destroys itself, or your opponent destroys it, and you can summon it again in that same turn. That's reasonable. Or you just stick to one, yeah. and you have it in your opening hand, and you you throw it down, and you get one raven a turn. And if it dies during the turn, you gotta wait till next turn. I almost feel like, and again, first five changes the dynamic of this game so amazingly because you could run one and then totally free up the space in your deck, right? Yeah. It's in your opening hand. You know you're playing it. Yeah. Um, the and other I'm attracted to that. Yeah. The other thing is like. If there are going to be board states where it makes sense for you to summon it again, mm -hmm. uh, it's the kind of card that you could put like one of in your deck. And if you put one of in your deck, the turn you draw it, it's like, okay, if I put the Raven out and then they destroy it, I know that I can action to focus it and then action to do it. The old surprise Raven. Yeah. Because getting that prey ability twice in a turn is so good. It's critical. Just so good. So good. Very critical. Okay, so the first thing we do, we picked our Phoenix Born. And now we're literally going to go through all the cards, and we're going to start with the other spell board cards and conjurations. So we can start mapping that out by the time we're going into the, all the other cards that are going to basically facilitate our game plan. So I'm, we're just going to go top down. All right, let's go. Let's any, go. Let's anything go. that's been updated, there's a handful. There's actually two, four, six conjurations that have been updated that the spells weren't, right? So as we go, once we hit those, I'll, we'll show those new cards. But we're going to be showing a bunch of updated cards, and there's still a lot more. I think this was like... 30 of the cards that are getting updated, which is a, about, uh, it's less than a third of the cards that are going to get updated in the 1.5 kit, which is crazy. The Ashes Reborn kit. That's right. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's go. First thing we get, Summon Blood Puppet, Steven's favorite. Gross. I'm going to uh, get coffee. I don't, I'm not interested right. in this at all. You want to pit me up while yeah. you're there? I'm <laughs> just going to read Scotty. it. Uh, so it's an action to play it, and then it's an action exhaust and a ceremonial die. Place a Blood Puppet Conjuration onto a target player's battlefield. Blood Puppet, uh, it's really just an awful thing that you can do. It's cursed at the end of each round, place a wound token on a Phoenix Sworn. Self-inflict, side action, resource, deal of damage to this unit. So you basically want to summon Blood Puppets onto your opponent's battlefield. And this does two things. 
if they don't get rid of it by taking a side action and spend a resource, they're going to have to take a damage each round. It also takes up a spot on their battlefield. This is a really good unit that was played out of um, Jessa. Mm -hmm. I think Jessa was the core set Phoenix yeah. form. It, and now there's good points here. First of all, Sanjuro uh, making an incredible entrance into the chat if you want to check that out. Second, uh, Blood Puppets work pretty well for me. You have a relatively small battlefield, right? Yep. And you kind of want things to be destroyed. Did, did, can your opponent destroy those units to get them out of here? They have to side action, spend a resource, deal a damage to it twice. And then if they do that, your snake gets bigger. That's right. So Blood Puppets need to go in my stack. I think that's stack. probably your, your stack. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm putting it in my stack. Yeah, yeah Bass Like Boss says yes. All right, next up we have Summon Mist Spirit. I love this one. Action. Uh, did this get up there? Nope. Uh, action, exhaust, uh, mask. Also worth saying, so Mayoni uh, basics, but the Silver Snake summon is a frog and a snake. So literally to summon the Silver Snake, I'm going to have to be looking at these two color dice. Yeah, I'm definitely on hearts because I've got to get the uh, the raven into. Yeah, so the summon the hearts spirit, pole, rather. you have to be also playing illusion. So I, I think the, Ooh, interesting. the max number of colors of dice I, I would probably run. There's going to be weird decks that run a lot, but I'm probably a two mains. So mm -hmm. like four or five each, and then one or two of a, of a splash. So technically, you know, you could do that. That makes sense. Uh, this says, place a Miss Spirit Conjuration on the battlefield. You can spend an additional resource when activating to place an additional Miss Spirit. These are really good for people that have big battlefields. Mm -hmm. uh, you can technically have ten Miss Spirits out. This is the most basic unit in the game. One, one, zero. The old one, one attack, one, one life, zero recovery. You get two out. They're pretty beautiful. Um, nah, I don't. I don't think there's any necessary synergy there. It's worth noting too. The summon Seaside Raven is three basics, so I'm not committed to any magic. But Saria's ability is Hearts, and it allows you to draw a card as a side action. So like, I'm pretty into that. So I'm probably going to take Sympathy for sure, and we'll see where yeah. we go from there. And the nice thing, the Illusion dice. I'm not Sympathy. This charm. In the original game, the original version of the game could actually remove your opponent's dice. Mm -hmm. So if you only ran one or two of a specific color, they could just snipe them. That's not the case anymore. Now it just downgrades the sides that they're on, which is way better. It That's opens so up deck building like crazy. Unreal. Yeah. All right. Summon Mirror Spirit. This is one that we liked. It takes a basic and a music note. What's that? Divine? Sympathy. Yeah. Sympathy. Uh, place a mirror, mirror Spirit Conjuration on the battlefield. You may remove all status tokens from a Mirror Spirit you control. If you remove at least one, place an Exhaustion token on a target unit. So exhaust some things down. Let's look at the Mirror Spirit. A uh, little galaxy raccoon. Yep. <laughs> Attack X, life 2, reflect sorrow. When this unit comes into play, place a status token on this unit for each exhaustion token on units a target player controls. Mm -hmm. um, That's significantly good. Uh, you know, this focused is a nice way to exhaust units, which is actually pretty relevant for me because I don't have a way to... I'm looking for ways to deal with big units. Sure. Um, so, so, yeah. You put it in your stack? Let's throw it in the stack. It's cool seeing it's, it's ways funnies. that are like indirectly tied to what you're doing. That, that's a lot of it where it's like it relates on a big picture level, but not like a, you know, Manny wants status tokens. So yeah. there might be units that do status tokens, but like it's not always going to be a perfect match like that. Ryan Roper asking the question, uh, how many summons do you normally run in a deck? It's, that's a really good question. Um, so my spell board as an example There's of Manny a... is five. I'm typically going to have probably two main conjurations, maybe mm -hmm. three, but like I only have five spots. One's going to be a silver snake when I'm doing it. And so I'm looking at one or two summon, because you're going to play allies as well from there's, your hand. Yeah, and there's some, there's some, depending on the way you're building, you might run like all allies. Yeah. Uh, and then use your spell book slots for like little instant type spells. So it I think it's totally really just depends. text. I don't know that there's a rule of thumb. It's kind of like, well, it's not like Netrunner in that way at all. So I will not say that. <laughs> so I recant. It's not at all like Netrunner. Uh, summon Indiglow Creepers. Action. These these guys are fun. It's a leaf, which works in mine, because that's on the other side of the front. Yeah, keep an eye and out. And a music note. Mm -hmm. So that would be a... Now we're getting now crazy. You're stretching. Uh, place the Indiglow Creeper. You, if it's focused, you can place a status token on the target unit you control. Oh. So that could be good for the snake. Heads up. Focus two, you can place a Luminous Seedling Conjuration onto your battlefield. So let's look at the Creeper. This guy's mm. he's cute. Just the cutest. Uh, little Indigo thing. Creeper, germinate. When this unit's destroyed, place a luminous seedling conjuration onto your battlefield. Fade, destroy this unit at the end of the round. So that is a way to charge up the snakes. They auto destroy. A lot of times mm. your opponent won't want to destroy. Are you kidding me? So you've got to focus one where you place a status token on a unit you control. And then oh, wait, when you. This only triggers off units you control. I can't eat my own units. Oh, uh, bummer. Almost. It's out of here then. The seedling, luminous seedling. 
Uh, this is just Caterpie and Butterfree all over again. <laughs> Action, remove two status tokens from this unit, destroy this unit. If you do, place two brilliant thorn conjurations on your battlefield. Growth out of this unit, one of this unit's life value for each status token on it. Uh, and then you have the Brilliant Thorn. And, and this, what you're looking at here in the Brilliant Thorn is kind of the final evolution. This is not, this is a, a very unique uh, thing happening with this Conjuration Path. And I think there's going to be, this is one you should just keep in your back pocket as like, I can add the Indiglo Creeper suite it's, to my it's deck. It's a chain of things going and on. And it's like, do it, it, why would I do that? Does the Brilliant Thorn make a lot of sense? Does the, the Seedling make a lot of sense for my deck? And there are some decks that are just going to be like, okay, I'll import this in here and do the evolution track because that's what I'm into. Yeah, and this, honestly, it, I'm going to put it in my short stack for Maoni because it, the, if the summon integral is focused, I can put a status token on a target unit. Um, and then even the Brilliant Thorn, Inherits one when this unit is destroyed, you can place a status token on a target unit. That's pretty good for you. So now. if I get to that point, two of those come out and it's two status tokens waiting to happen. It, pretty good for you. I put it in your stack. This is also a really good example of because when this is destroyed, uh, you can summon this, right? But then technically, you could at that point be summoning again if this is focused another mm -hmm. creeper. So like being able to get a bunch of different units on the table out of a single spell is a way to go wide without having to take up your spell slots. That's true. You're right. So we're gonna put that in the short stack. We'll see where Maoni ends up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, questions coming th coming through. Most of these are old uh, 1.0 cards. We don't know. All we know is the core cards that we have access to. The core cards that have been previewed on the on the website on Plat Hat's website. Yeah. Um, so you know, we're building a deck just to show you the process and so that we can play it on stream. But many of these cards are going to be changing in Ashes Reborn. Now, given the changes we've seen, though, they're going to fill likely the same niche. So yeah. I would just assume that uh, a deck in 1.0 is probably going to be about as good in Reborn. Maybe a little bit of tweaking going to be needed. But. Yeah. All right. Next, we get Summon Sarasaurus Mount, mm. which looks awesome. I love Action, dinosaurs. basic. It's a leaf and a an angel and a divine. Yeah. Some of the divine. Remove an ex unexhausted ally you control from play. If you do, place a Sarasaurus Mount conjuration on the battlefield and place that ally face down under this unit. So if you had an ally out. The ally is basically riding this unit, and this unit is what's active. Ride that Sarasaurus, yeah. So the Sarasaurus mount is a conjuration. Overkill one when it destroys a unit and an opponent controls, deal the damage to their Phoenix Born. You can unsummon it, which is discard it. After this unit leaves play, choose a face down ally that was under this unit and dismount that ally. So that means they bounce back to hand, right? Yeah, this now now it does. Ashes 2.0 or, or reborn rules. That is exactly how it works. When it destroys a unit and an opponent controls by attacking, deal one damage to target opponent's Phoenix Born. There's there's nothing special for me in this unit. It's fine. Yeah. Let's go on into the final. Padrig pile. here. Awesome comment. Uh, dudes, just discovered you. Watching your Middle Earth uh, CCG solo walkthrough from the 13th of August. When are you doing another Middle Earth CCG video? Hey, keep an eye on Zach. I'm about to be gone uh, a week and a half from now. And uh, I, I bet he plays it at least once. You never know. During that week, I, I bet he played. I, I do love that game. I'm I'm listening to the Lord of the Rings uh, right now, actually, and I'm in the middle of Return of the King. I'm getting a lot of goosebumps when I'm reading this book. Listen to this book, by the really? way. Really? Like, I haven't read the book you since I've been ends, an adult. Right? I do. <laughs> There's just a lot of moments in that book that are like uh, chilling. Like, yeah, it's just very good. There's yeah, okay. sad and sweet and everything in between. It's a very popular uh, popular uh, world. Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard it's about it before. Really good. Speaking of, can you just take a second? Let's talk about this Mandalorian uh, 2 trailer. We, we, we were supposed to talk about it yesterday. It, it's fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of Reborn, that's, that's, that's Star Wars Reborn right that's there. That's all, yeah. It, it gives us all very, very much a lot of hope. I was going to say hope is the, uh, uh, the only word. I hope this is the new Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like, let's just take the rest of it and put it on a shelf <laughs> and, and, and appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, in whatever way we find fitting. And then let's move forward with this version of I, Star Wars. I think it is the new Star Wars. It, it is very clear. That, that trailer is something else. Also, It made it, me feel the way I felt when I saw the first Star Wars movie. Yeah. It's like, I was just like, there's a giant world out here, a giant universe, and the possibilities and how cool and how exciting and interesting everything is. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, this is the way. Did you see the Dune trailer? Yes. Also fantastic. Well, it's the best director on the planet. Agreed. Summon Salamander Monk. Speaking of best directors, this guy's awesome. Uh, action, basic, and a music note. 
Place a Salamander Monk onto your battlefield. Look at this guy. Look at the Salamander Monk. Mm -hmm. Every time. It didn't time. get much better. I mean, that's like right down the uh, Studio Ghibli, Tony did or Lizzie, if Jonathan, my brother's listening. This, this is just the art style forever. Mouse Guard, you know, is the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, when he's destroyed, you got to put a Monk Spirit into play. A Monk Spirit can't block or be chosen as a target of an attack, but he can attack. Just a little, little just guy a little doing his thing. So this guy's fun, but he's not, I don't think. Hey, give me that guy. Give me uh, that guy. You want that I guy. like the art. All right, next. I'm also kind of getting into the sympathy magic, so maybe that's my life now. Yeah, you're very sympathetic. Aggra you said you're aggressive, but it's sympathetic is the is the new way. You can be you. sympathetically aggressive. Aggressively sympathetic? Yeah, that's kind of I where like I that. am. So, summon Dread Wraith. Uh, three ceremonials. This is a black dice. Uh, and a basic and an exhaust. Uh, place a or uh, exhaust in action. Place a Dread Wraith Conjuration on the battlefield. Focus two, you can remove an exhaustion token from a Dread Wraith you control. Look at these guys. Yeah, you like these guys. One attack, six life. They have rage one. Add one to their attack value for each wound on them. So this could be really good, especially with Mayoni, right? Um, if they get up to four or five attack, this is a, she does a side action. They do their five or six damage to something, and then they get a swing mm -hmm. for real skis at someone. So I'm going to put this. I also like the theme. Which is you have this like Egyptian like dead stuff too. Egyptian snake queen mm -hmm. in like the whole mummy tomb that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's true. Just, just kind of fits that's actually for me. true. Very relevant. And you know, a theme is going to be the number one rule here. Uh, next, we have the summon steadfast guardian. It's an action after to play it. After one or more exhaustion tokens are placed on a unit controlled by the effect of a spell or... Holy man, this is a paragraph. <laughs> the effect of a spell or ability... I bet this one gets a little You changed. can spend a divine or a charm and place an exhaustion token on this spell to place a steadfast guardian. Okay, so here's what it is. You get exhausted, you get to put a guardian out. After an exhaustion token is placed on a unit I control, you can spend one of these resources to put a steadfast guardian on the battlefield. If it's focused, you can search a discard pile for a card and remove it from the game. That's that's changing. All of this is changing. Yeah, steadfast guardian. When this unit bec uh, comes into play, you can spend a basic to remove all exhaustion tokens from a target unit and place them onto this unit. This is one of those weird cards that happens in a meta game where exhaustion has gotten too strong, and so they introduce this so that a meta can get out from under whatever blue jaguar strategy was going on. Now the thing is, you put an exhaustion token on a unit when it strikes. That's right. So I actually really like this with my snakes. Because if they're going to be big and bad, I need them to do a lot. So when they exhaust, I can get, get a unit in, and she takes it. Effect of a spell or ability. <laughs> Although, here's what I'll say. If you lock If you've got down, a big snake, then my only answer to that is exhaustion, right? Yeah. So, so you gonna, can guard gonna, the, I'm gonna, I'm guard gonna the snake. I'm going to put it right here in my little pot. Guard the snake. All right. Uh, speaking of the queen of the undead here, summon fallen, a basic and a ceremonial. Basic... Uh, an action and a basic discard an ally from your hand or remove an ally from your discard pile from the game. If you do, place a Fallen Conjuration, basically raising them from the dead. You can repeat this effect one additional time. Focus one, when a Fallen Conjuration you control would receive damage, you can place an Exhaustion Token on the spell, prevent that damage. This is really a card for high battlefield, because this is the zombie stuff. Yeah, Fallen. You want you got to have a high battlefield. We don't have a high battlefield, do you? I have a five. What are you at? Four, three, two, eight? Four. Four? Yeah, we don't need this. This is not for me. No. It's just zombies. Zombie. I do. I love <laughs> this. Is this is so zombies? Whatever. This is the kind of dead things I'm into. But ghostly mounts. So yeah, summon Sign ghostly mount. Yeah, this is hit me. Hit the button. Uh, action and a basic action or side action. Exhaust a mask, and also a music note. Immediately unplayable by me. It's and or or either. That's an and. That is an and. Yeah, it's an and dot. So this is not for me, but it's pretty cool. Uh, you can remove an unexhausted ally you control. If you do, place Mounded. a Pale Speed mount, it's mounting it. Focus 2, you can place a Nightmare mount instead. So the uh, Pale Steed mount looks awesome. Mm. Look at that, though. Unit Guard. Unit Guard's very valuable now. It's super valuable. Uh, unsummon, it can go away and you can bounce the unit. So you've got to basically put an ally on it, and then that, that now can Unit Guard. The yeah. ally can ride that and guard your units. Or you can play the Spectral Charger mount, which has what? battle advantage. It's the either or. And then if it's focused, you can do a third thing. Um, What's this nightmare? Hold on, are we? Hold on. It's, there's a nightmare mount. So oh. you can either do the pale steed oh. or the spectral. I got you. So battle focused, advantage or? Oh my gosh! I need this. If it's focused too, you can instead do the nightmare mount, which is terrifying too. Units cannot be blocked or guarded by units with an attack value of two or less. This unit can't be. So that's nice with your raven because you can uh, clear out one of my twos if this guy's in play. Yeah. I love this because it gives me the option to either. 
have unit guard or have double battle advantage, because this is essentially another copy of Seaside Raven. Yeah. If you got two of those out, and it's just like, I can do six damage before you do anything to me, I want this. You got him. Now I got to find something that's going to ride it. We'll get to the Am I going to have to? I'm going to have to run like at least one illusion. So I'm going to I'm going to put one in my in my stack. In pile. I'm also going to take a, a sing song dice. It's or, the teal. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Summon mind fog owl. The birds. We're back to the birds. Action. During a player's turn, when you would draw one or more cards, you can draw one fewer card. If you do, place this card onto your battle spell board. That's really nice because you have a draw ability. Mm -hmm. It's really nice, yeah. Action, exhaust heart, which you're already doing, and a basic. Place a Mind Fog Owl Conjuration on the battlefield. If it's focused, you can spend a snake and discard a card uh, instead. Okay. Fine. One less die. Trade a card for a die, basically. Wait, how is that better? Well, you use one less die. Oh, yeah. And then if it's focused twice, it cannot. If you cannot place a mind fog out, choose a target opponent to discard a card from their hand. Okay, fine. Because you only have two in play. Um, so the mind fog out two two unseen can't be blocked unless all attacking units without the unseen ability have been blocked. That's awesome with that raven, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's awesome with that raven. Here you go. You got to block the raven and then get wrecked by battle advantage. Come on. Not not pretty. It's already in my it's in my stack. All right, this is a fun unit. Uh, summon Lightbringer, basic. It's an action, exhaust, and then a uh, divine. Place a Lightbringer conjuration onto your battlefield. I like spells that look like that. I like the Lightbringer. Look at that thing, Lightbringer. Infactuate. When this unit comes into play, you can spend a basic to attach Infactuated conjuration and alteration spell to a target unit. One attack, two life. This is uh, basically to get dazed so by your. Basically, beauty. infatuate him with your your peacockness, right? You're yeah. twirling. So, and then when this, this is pretty kind of clever, because it comes out and infatuates someone. When the Lightbringer attacks, if the infatuated thing's out, this has to block this. Hmm. OK. So you can make it block you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's cool. It scares me, though. It confuses me. It's I don't three cards. It. All right, summon Ice Golem. Yeah, Ben, exactly. Wingspan deck. There's a lot of birds in this there game. Is, the amount of birds yeah. in this game is actually troubling. Hi. I'm, look, I've got a raven right here. And I've got owls. Ooh. Oh my god, am I running a bird deck? <laughs> uh, You're the aggressive birds. I've got horses, salamander monks, owls, ravens, and a galaxy raccoon. Uh, <laughs> a galaxy raccoon. That's a rocket. Summon mm -hmm. ice golem. Uh, two leaves, that could work for me. Place an ice golem conjuration onto your battlefield. Focus to remove a wound token from, one wound token from all your ice golems. Ice Golems add two to this unit's life value if it has one or more alteration spells attached. So you want to build on top of it. It's not really doing anything for me. Yeah, not, uh, not for me either. I'm not excited about it at all. Although I'll probably be building up my Raven, maybe. Did we already see some? Yeah, there it is. We have two copies of Summon Dread Wraith. All right. Don't know why. Uh, summon Weeping Spirit. This is <laughs> another one of those units. Uh, it is a charm die, so I could play it. Which might. <laughs> you sound really excited about it. Uh, it's actually, it's going to go in my, it's, this is a weird deck happening. Yeah, well, it's also going to change, I think. It's removing discard pile from the game. I think they're like scrubbing yeah, that entire I won't worry idea. about that. But basically you can place a Weaving Spirit onto a target player's battlefield. So just like the units. Mm -hmm. But instead of uh, taking side actions to, to do damage to it, you can take a side action, discard a card to destroy it. And then you get, the snake gets bigger. Because technically, it, yeah. is it my unit at that point? What yeah. does the snake say, the new a one? A unit you control. Yeah. Mm, this so is it might be a blood puppet. This uh, is a ridiculous <laughs> already. I hate this already. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> yeah. It's free out. shuffle. All right. Uh what is happening? There's another blood puppet. I'm gonna put this stuff we have extras over. I've got these horsies over here that I'm definitely interested in. I'm gonna send these across the bow here. What is it? Summon squall stallion. Uh that's a, a sympathy die, a, a music note, and a basic draw card. Place one of these on the battlefield, and then it's just natural synergy. Opportunist 2, when you draw one or more cards, add 2 to the unit's attack value. So obviously, I've got an ability on Saria that draws a card. It yep. seems obvious I should be running these. I also love water horses. I mean, it's look at that art. That's hard to beat. How can you? Yeah, you can't beat it for uh, somebody like me. Yeah. All right, so now we get to an updated card, which is Maybe great. Maybe I'll go horses instead of birds. I like that. You're just a 
you know, Rohan over here. Yeah, that's uh, right. S summon Iron Rhino. Action and a Leaf. Action, basic, six resources. Oof. Now, remember this? You remember this, by I the do. way? I went back and watched the video. We did our original unboxing for Asher Drives of the Phoenix Born in 2015, and everybody on the video, which I believe was you and I and maybe Tim, were saying this card is garbage. Six is a lot. And you know what happened? It was garbage. They changed it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so you have to pay six, which is 60% of your resources for a turn. You, if it's focused one, you reduce it by one. If it's focused two, you reduce it by one. So it technically could cost four if you have three of these out. Mm -hmm. now for let's, what? Let's look at the original Iron Rhino. Oh, is there a new one? There is a new one. Oh my gosh, so good. So it's a five attack, four life. No ability, zero cover. Um, which is just nowhere near good enough. It's not at all good enough. For 60% of your turn. It was never, never good enough. Especially with how much just exhausted unit there was in the game. Yeah. It's like, ah, exhausted. 60% of my turn is just gone. Yeah. You, lo you lose. You just play it and lose. So instead, we get the Iron Rhino. So we got a Reborn Iron Rhino. Reborn Iron Rhino. How many Rhino. can we have out? One. Only one. So we're seeing a lot more of this. Yeah. A lot more single, uh, single conjuration. But look at this thing. So it gets seven attack instead of five. Four life is the same. Recover zero is the same. But look, it's got a big text box. Gigantic one. Cannot be blocked or guarded against by units with a life value of one or less. Mm. Which is good, because they would have all their little one health stuff, mm -hmm. and then they could block your giant attack with a nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, overkill two, after this unit destroys a unit an opponent controls by attacking, deal two damage to that target, opponent's target phoenix form. Beautiful. Got so, overkill. Yep. It's doing something. Absolutely necessary. So if they can't block it, it's seven damage coming at you. Mm -hmm. If they do block it, they have to block it with a two life or more. And also, it's still going to do two damage to whatever it's attacking. All right, here's what I'm saying. I think I'm going to run that. Is the Summon Iron Rhino the same? Uh, that This card? Yep. The, so the, the book is the same. And here's why I think I want to run this. Um, I also might run it. Because A, I can destroy a two life or less unit when I summon the Raven. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the next best thing that would block the Iron Rhino, I can just get off the board. Yep. And then number two is that it's only basic symbols. Seaside Raven only takes basic symbols, so my dice are opening up like crazy. Yep. I don't need to commit anything to the Iron Rhino. Uh, and number three, it's a way for me to take out a giant unit that the Seaside Raven can't handle with battle advantage. Yeah. So it's like all the things are kind of combining to make me really want to run this. You can only have one. There can be only one, and it no. fits into my, uh, what do you call horses and rhinos, things with four legs? Quad quadrupeds? Oh man, you're, you're past me. I'm running the quadruped deck. So here's the thing. Four uh, feet. How many of these would you quadruped. end up running? All three? You trying to focus it? I don't know. Yeah. Make it a four summon? Probably. Probably. I mean, it's So I'm just going to pass this to you. Okay. And I'm going to keep this on my short list. Because Maoni. You've got can, so many creatures to choose from, you'll never choose the right But Maoni can let me side action seven damage a unit. Wait, say what again? Maoni focuses and then she says. Reborn Maoni. Oh, this is good for you. Choose an unexhausted unit you control. Deal damage to a target unit equal to the chosen unit's attack value. That's real good. I mean, do you ever really need to do seven to a unit? Come on. Wait, it's, it's show me something with seven health. That's the idea. It murders <laughs> anything. Anything can, can go on this. Anyways, <laughs> creatures, that's right. All right. Uh, so this is another updated card. This is a summon three-eyed owl. Infamous mm. card. Got the got the charm magic. Place a three-eyed owl conjuration on the battlefield. Let's look at this three-eyed owl. I, I want to I want to express to everybody um, watching that if you want to know why this unit is infamous, we have on this very channel our last battle report. I think it was our last gameplay video for Ashes at Gen Con 2016, 2017, 2016. Uh, and if you watch that game, two players made it to the finals. Very talented players, I'm sure. Uh, with the deck du jour uh, that was all about three-eyed owls and basically nothing else. Um, and it was like putting a dagger in your eye to do commentary <laughs> for that game. It was like, oh, here comes another owl, and we're going to see a discard here. He's down to 23 cards, and then 22, 21, 20... Game goes on for about an hour. Because when you run I've out of your done. deck, by the way, if you can't draw any card you would draw, you take a damage instead. Yeah. Now I'm sure technically it was very you know impressive, and you had to make some really tough tough calls. Uh, but as an observer, it was just so boring. Uh, so hopefully it gets changed. It is getting changed, but less than you'd want. 
<laughs> yeah, Jim, exactly. It's like two DLR valves milling each other. All right, so first notable change is the number you can have. In the original version, it was five. The reborn three eyed owl is three. Okay, it's fair. We also have the attack dropping to zero. It's got three eyes. It does have three. Three on the battlefield. That's right. Yeah, they come in threes. Uh, it's got zero attack. So before you could summon them, and then they could actually be used to ping your opponent, but now they can't. Good. Two life, zero cover. It still has memory drain one. Action, cool. uh, exhaust, choose a target player, discard a card from their hand. Same thing. Yeah. So the difference is you can only have three. Hand size is five, so you can't just potentially nuke their whole hand with, yep. with these guys. Yep. The other thing is no attack. units are a lot more difficult to keep on the board. Mm -hmm. Previously, a unit uh, could block for a unit. A Phoenix Born could block unlimited times. Now, to block as a Phoenix Born, you have to exhaust. Right on. So you can only do that once. Yeah. And units can only block for units if they have a unit guard. So this is getting good. Literally, they're just a lot easier to deal with. And like before, like if you have four or five of these out, I can only get rid of so many before you start going with them. Yeah, you just start milling. And you start draining. So it, it's a it's a smaller touch. Not as it's honestly, I, I kind of expected them to go a little further with it. I, I but I'm I, okay with it. No, and we've talked to Nick has said uh, that mill is still going to be a part of the game because it's literally built into the system, and I, I'm I'm fine with that. It's built in in a way that f doesn't feel bolted on, it doesn't feel like an unfair win condition. Um, and so having units that are going to play into that is fine as long as they're not also good in other ways. And so having no attack and, and not having five out, I think, is fine. Yep. I'll still hate him. I'll kill him on sight. Yep. Uh, then we get to summon Orchid Dove. Let's just look at the Orchid Dove. Your opponents cannot, ta cannot take an attack a Phoenix Born main action or attack a unit main action. During their turn, as a, an opponent may spend one. Let's just take all these cards and, and yeah, get them out of here. Yeah. Sh summon Shadow Spirit. I like this one better. It's a wolf. <laughs> Place a Shadow Spirit Conjuration on the battlefield. Let's see what it does. Shadow Spirit. Illusion, mm. if this unit receives damage, it's gone. Now, if you haven't seen, uh, now this is Studio Ghibli to the max. This is Spirited Away, literally, from the real. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so wh why would we ever run this card? So it's life is equal to the number of uh, summon Shadow Spirits. Um, it's basically a super cheap, right? It's mm -hmm. one wolf gets you a unit. Um, and so at its max, it's a two attack, three life unit uh, for could, one die. It could be a four life. Uh, you, you can have four of these guys? No, you can. Have, you could have four of these out, though. Oh. Over time. Oh, it's just the spells on the spell board, though. So if you have three of these on your spell board, oh. it's a three life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was equal to the Shadow Spirits. So it starts as a 2-1, mm -hmm. which is fine for a die. I mean, that's good. Yeah, for one. If it's destroyed, if he takes damage, it's destroyed. And isn't there some cards that make illusions turn like normal or permanent or something? Yes. I think so. Um, so you probably want to look at Yeah, those. if you were already going illusion dice, I think that's a fine one die creature to and be able to have a... Bass like boss here, good point. Curious if Illusion as an ability is going away completely because False Demon, which used to have it, lost it in Reborn. We'll, we're going to see that False Demon in a minute. Uh, next we have Summon Shadow Hound. Three Illusion dice on the face. Can't see me. Place a Shadow Hound <laughs> Conjuration. If focus, deal, a, die. deal a damage to a target unit. Focus two, you can deal damage to a target unit. That's pretty good. Creepy Art, Shadow Hound. Illusion, mm. same thing. Three attack, five life, but if it takes any damage, it's gone. It's really all about those focus abilities. Yep. Two free damage to target units is really strong. That's, and that's pretty good for you, too, because you're snaking around. Yeah. Now, it's also good for me, because like, you, know, you can ping one and then raven in for that uh, battle advantage three, and you can take care of a lot of problems that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the middle. I, it's not going to replace any of my stuff, so... Yeah. You, I, it should. looks like Illusion might be going away, so I'm just going to ditch all the Illusion all cards. Right. That's nothing to worry about. Then we get more Summon Ice Golem. We <laughs> yeah. already saw that thing. <laughs> Let's see it again. Summon Night Song Cricket. If you didn't meditate this turn, after this card is discarded from your hand, you can spend a resource to place it onto your spell board. Interesting. I'm going to guess that that's changing, too. Uh, Night we Song just Cricket. Make some, we should make some wagers as we go On through the card bets. pool. Like, I bet this one changes. Uh, Night Song Cricket. Polyphony? Polyphony. Yeah. Either when this unit is destroyed, change a die and a target player's active pool to a side of your choice. Renewed Harmony, that sounds nice. When this unit is destroyed, you and a target opponent each choose a card in the other's discard pile, place the chosen card in their owner's hand. I don't want anything to do with that. I like him. He's cool. Oh, yes. Summon Vampire Bat Swarm. <laughs> it's the bats. It's the, the bats, bats time. <laughs> Action, basic, ceremonial knife, a music note, place a vampire bat. I don't have the musics. You gotta attack, you gotta sing. Vampire Bat Swarm. Swarm 2. When this unit would deal damage to a Phoenix Born by attacking, you may instead deal one damage to up to two target units. Mm -hmm. It receives one less damage every time it gets hit, and then uh, you discard at the end of the round. 
Yeah. Because the day comes and they don't like it. Ah, it's not for me right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't need that. All right, next. Oh, yes. Yes, we can. Summon Winged Lioness. Sir, uh, Divine Angel Are you, you going to find your way into Divine with this deck? Maybe, yeah. I mean, Mayoni looks like she, she would run Divine, divine magic, Yeah, right? for sure. Right, 100%. Uh, Winged Lioness. Look at this art, though, on the Winged Lioness. Yeah, I, I think I uh, rambled on about this last video. I don't know why a smaller publisher like Plaid Hat can figure out how to do this and uh, no, like card games. No one else does. Like maybe on promos, they're like, yeah, let's let's make the cards look beautiful. I don't get it. And then normally they just put them in a little box. Yeah. Uh, I guess the know. cutting and the, but I, they figured it out. I'm just going to put it in my stack because I like it. Yeah, you got to put it in there. Summon Emperor Lion, two divine and a basic. Place Emperor Lion Conjuration on your battlefield. Let's look at the Emperor. This when is a lot. You just run all the lions if you're running the lions, right? I it, don't know. It's a package that you, you just got to have the lions. Let's see what he does. He's a 3 3, which I like. When this unit deals damage to a Phoenix Born by attacking, you can deal one additional damage to the Phoenix Born. Nice. Healing Aura, recover value of all your other units has increased by one. Your, That's cool. Uh, I'm just going to put him in a stack. Silver Snake's got some recover. All right, now we're getting to the goods. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. This is what has to go in my deck. Summon Gilder. Mm. Loved it, always loved it. Basic with a charm. Fitting into what I already need. Charm and nature for the snakes. Uh, action, exhaust, leaf. Place a gilder onto your battlefield. You can deal a damage to a target unit, which is going to be super good with it's the snakes. It's all great. And you destroy a snake with it. You destroy and eat it with the snake. It's so good. We got new gilders too, don't we? We do. They're right here. So the old gilder, unit guard, inheritance one. When it's destroyed, you can place a status token on a target unit. Obviously good this for the snakes. This is just, oh my gosh. How? It's built for the snakes. But tell me, tell me this. Why in the world would you have such great synergy between mice and snakes? They're natural enemies. It's all because of Mayoni. She, there's one card with the little snake, the little mice are like under her cape and it's hilarious. Because they're the gold. She's, she's they're the literally gilding. painting things gold. Yeah. And uh, she's got a snake that's silver. Wait a minute. Hold on, I'm onto something here. She's gonna have to get the gold snake. Why isn't it called the gold snake and then it would work great with the gilders like it does currently? Clearly, there's been a mistake. The snake hasn't been gilded yet. Uh, the new one, some similar updates to a unit we saw earlier. First up, you can only have two of them. So we're seeing this a lot. You can have a lot less of these things in play. Oh, that's way better. Going from one to zero attack. So they used to be so good at blocking and guarding, and also they could attack. Yeah. So that, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. They still have unit guard. They still have inheritance one. That's just the only change. So we... You gotta love those. Are... And I'm going to Seaside Raven those gilders to the max. Yes, you are. But these are going in, into the definite pile, and this extra stuff's going out. All right, we've almost made it. Uh, oh, is this the last of them? Well, this yeah. is the end of the Conjurations. Uh, once you start filtering through, like you start seeing like there's only so many choices actually for your stuff. And like I said, I think you can you can probably get these into like packages of things to start with. Like you can take yeah. the lion package, or for me, maybe I'm taking the hooved package. Uh, which may not have actual synergy with Man, with I almost died right there. <laughs> or the bird package, if you, if you want to make your opponent hate their life. By the way, apparently people saying that uh, snake owners can commonly feed their snakes mice. Yeah, right. So that's but, what, man, he's using them to gild, and then when she's done with them, it's... Okay, that's fair. But all, why are they blocking for the snake if they know the they're going to get eaten anyway? Well, maybe... I would not be in the way of the snake, maybe is what I'm saying. Maybe they don't know they're going to get eaten. Hmm. Anyways... Summon False Demon. Look at the art on that page. That's that's mm -hmm. intense. A mask and a basic place a False Demon conjuration onto your battlefield. The original False Demon, we did get an update, but we'll show the original mm. first. Unit Unigard, Guard, I like it's Unigard. also an illusion, so it disappears. One attack, four life. The new one, the Reborn False Demon, you can only have two out mm -hmm. instead of five. It's a two, two attack two. Instead That's of, changed dramatically. Instead of the one attack, it's 100% more attacking. <laughs> two life, zero recover still. It does not have illusion which is why the life goes way down. It's basically, if it gets hit, it's going to go away. When this unit comes into play, you can deal the damage to a target exhausted unit. Ooh, I kind of like that. I like that a lot. Give me that. There's Give me that two. demon. So, thank you. We'll put it in the pile, right? It never hurts to put it in the yeah, pile. It's like it, adding the, it to your wish list. The first filter, it, when, we, when I deck build for various games, I used to do this a lot with Destiny. The first thing I would do is literally go through all the cards I could play and click on the ones that I can and add them to my deck. And I would end up with like a 120 card Destiny deck. And then the second pass is like getting that down to like 50. And yeah. then you start making the real changes. That's your, that's your uh, change. All right, summon Nightshade Swallow. This is another one of them birds. <laughs> I don't need it. It's got so much text on it. I don't even want to look at it. 
it's and not it that does bad. weird technical stuff. You know, it's not like yeah, you know, hurt your opponent. It's like so the nice shade swallow is actually death strike. When this unit deals one or more damage to a unit, it's attacking or countering. You destroy the unit. Oh well, that's great. That could be good for me. Plus, it's two uh, to summon it. It's two charm dice. Place a nightshade swallow onto your battlefield. Focus one. You can choose a target player to discard a card off the top of their draw pile if you have fewer dice in your active pool. Then that's fine. Here you go. Here, train me the iron rhino. I'll take that one. What? I don't want the iron rhino anymore. It's got. I didn't realize I had the nature die on the on the spell book. I don't have the nature die, and I don't want it. This has got two hearts. I'm already. The nature. Oh, on that. Yeah, to cast mm. it. Uh, this has got the the I two hearts. You know, it's all good. I like that you really liked it, so you just upgraded. Yeah, I was dogging on it, and then I immediately loved it. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait, that's really good. This is the way that I can kill big things that I can't otherwise deal with. There it is. I and was it's got to discard off in. the top, so a late game, if it's a real heater, Soraya can discard one, this thing can discard one, and I can run the strategy that I hate the most. Mill. All right, summon Ancestor Spirit. It's a action, illusion, basic, mm -hmm. action, Exhaust. Discard a card from your hand and, or move a die from your active pool to your exhausted pool. If you do, draw a card or place an Ancestor Spirit onto the battlefield. Ancestor Spirit, zero attack, one life. Side action, exhaust, exhaust something else. Ooh, baby. I do like that. After this exhaust, you remove it from the game. Do you like this thing? I'm not using it. Yeah, give it, give it to me. That was more aggressive than I uh, <laughs> planned on it being. Let's start, ah! Let's start exhausting. Yes, excellent. Place one exhaustion token on Yeah, Lanky's saying those uh, swallows can eat up my snakes easy. Oh, yeah, exactly. Gotta have those mice around to guard them. Birds though. are known predators. All right, here's snakes. another update. Summon Frostback Bear. Action and a frog. Looking like it's good for me. Action, exhaust, frog, basic. Place a Frostback Conjuration on the battlefield. The original Frostback Bear. It was super good, right? Everybody ran this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Two attack, three life. You can have four out. Freeze one. When this unit deals damage to another unit, spend an, a basic resource, exhaust. place an exhaustion. I on remember unit. this thing. Spite one. When this unit deals damage to a Phoenix Born, you may deal an additional damage to that Phoenix Born. Here's What's the, not to like? The Reborn Frostback Bear. Ooh, you can yeah. only have two. Yes. Two attack instead of two attack. Same thing. <laughs> Three life, zero recovery, all the same. And then it gets simpler. You look, there's a lot less text here. Terrifying one, this unit cannot be blocked or guarded by units with an attack value of one or less. Yeah, great. Oh my gosh, I love the fundies. Oh, that's so I'm much gonna better. I'm going to put it in the pile because it matches my resource type. Also, yes, you should. You got frogs. We have extras. All right, n another update. Here we are. Summon Butterfly Monk. Oh, I used to action. love these guys. To play it, action, exhaust, and a frog. To use it, place a Butterfly Monk on your battlefield. Butterfly Monks. Unit pre guards. Previous yeah. version. One attack, X life, one recover. X is the number of summon Butterfly Monk spells on your board. Lasting Blessing 1, when this unit is destroyed, remove a wound token from a target unit or Phoenix Born. Unit guard, of course. The new version, you can only have two of instead of five. One attack. One life, there's no life axe again. Zero recovery, unit guard, and then inexhaustible mend one. When this unit is destroyed, you remove a wound token from a target unit or phoenix one. Great, they gave it a keyword, cool, instead of that last blessing. Yeah. Um, that's just such a good unit guard unit. Are you going to run that in addition to the guilders? Or? I don't know. It's going to my stack, though, because it matches my resource types. Mm -hmm. Then we get the summon majestic titan. Oh, tell me more. <laughs> when a spell, ability, or dice power would target a majestic titan, you may discard this card to cancel the effects of the spell, ability, or dice power. I like that a lot. Action, basic, snake, heart, or music and two basic. Place a majestic titan conjuration onto your battlefield. So you already are thinking about the charms. The or is everything between the dots, right? So it's heart or music note and then two basics. Oh. I think. Okay, yeah, I think yeah, we yeah. talked about that yep. last time. So it's a snake and then a heart or a music note and two basics. Right on. So these things better be good. <laughs> Focus one, opponents cannot attach an alteration spell to a majestic titan you control. They, are these going to be some big old... Uh, Look at this. Oh, a 2-6. Looks it's like it's elephant. from Reboot. 2-6, uh, only one on the battlefield, Did recovery get, three. Do you understand that reference? Did you ever watch Reboot? Mm -mm. You didn't watch Reboot. Are you shocked? I'm not shocked, actually. What up, Benjamin Anderson? Anybody out there watch Reboot? Uh, you know, that was some weird animation, art, whatever they were up to. It was strange. Watch it on Sunday mornings. You did or you did? I did. No, I do not anymore. I'm sure it has not aged well. <laughs> so the Titan is a gigantic two. Can't be blocked or guarded by units with a life value of two or less. 
Befuddling Blow. When this unit deals damage to a unit, you may force that unit to deal damage equal to its attack value to a target unit of your choice. Other than itself. That's awesome. I love that unit. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not ringing any bells for me, though. I'm just going to tell you. All right, and then the final unit in my stack is the Summon Biter. It's a leaf and a basic. Place a Biter Conjuration onto your battlefield. This one's for you, man. This is for you. The Biter is three attack, two life, unit guard, etc. Rooted cannot attack. So that's another good unit guard. So but I've noticed all the nature stuff has all the unit guards. That's that's good for Maoni, though, because she can uh, use the three attack. Oh my gosh, it's built for Maoni. Yeah, so we're just putting it in the stack. All right. <coughs> oh my gosh. Naomi with biters is great. Like that's like the kind of synergy that wins a, a national tournament. Seriously, it's good. Yeah, I'm I'm with it. So let's let's how how big is your potential unit stack? Well, these are my conjurations, but I'm only going to choose two or three of these. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. So like I I don't need more. But so I do need some allies if I'm, they're going to ride these pale steeds. So you want to go through the allies next? Yeah, let's look at the allies. All right. Big old stack of cards. This is the whole collection, too. So yep. this is not... It is overwhelming if you're new, and that's fine. It's but, okay to be overwhelmed. But in the grand scheme of uh, card games, this is pretty reasonable for how much product has been up. I feel like, though, the reality is if you pick a Phoenix Horn and you just walk through the cards and you just actually take the time, mm -hmm. you filter the collection down to, we'll have a stack that's not that crazy. It won't be that scary. scary. Yeah. All right, let's look at the allies. A lot of people uh, like Reboot, by the way, so you're missing on that. But Bass Like Boss correctly uh, <laughs> scalding me. Uh, scalding? No. What do you say when you... Correcting? Uh, there's a, there's an S word for it. Not scalding. That's like a tea kettle. Uh, scolding. Very close. <laughs> uh, he was scolding yeah, me. Uh, those, you, those words are like cousins. You never watch Reboot, ask the man that hasn't watched all of the MCU. Well, listen, I had a lot more time on Sunday mornings when I was 13, okay? Why is Steven crying? I'm just get, getting dunked Steven on. Steven got dunked on. All right, let's look at some units. The first one is the Leech Warrior. He's been updated, actually. So the original Leech Warrior, two attack, three life, three recover, uh, two ceremonial, and a basic. Shadow Drain, when this unit receives one or more damage, you can select a die in a target player's active pool. That's got to go. The new one only costs a single ceremonial. It's named differently. It's a Blood Shaman now. Oh, but it's the same art. Yeah. So it's this, I assume it's the same unit. It's just uh, changing. Uh, it can't be a warrior because it's got zero attack. Yeah, right. Two life, one recovery. So less life, less attack, less recovery. Also way less expensive. Yeah. Then it has inexhaustible ability called Blood Ritual 1. When it's destroyed as a result of a spell, ability, or dice power you control, you may remove a wound token from a Phoenix Born and then raise one die in your active pool one level. That's cool. Good for them. I, I have no interest in, in that unit. Yep. All right. So he's going to go to the pile. Next. Uh... String Mage, oof, the horsey die. You got to run that, right? Action, exchange link, move one wound or status token from a target unit onto this unit, or move one wound or status token from this unit onto a target unit. Onto a target unit, any unit, even yours. I just don't have that die. I do. You want it? I, she might be riding that pale steed, honestly. She, she might be the one I uh, put oh, on Oh, man. The, this would be horse. so bad for my snakes. What does it say? Yeah, but I like it can move more. the status token from the snake to her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve is excited. Next, we get the flute mage. <laughs> Love it. Action, music note, basic. Side action as an ability. Remove an exhaustion token from a target unit. Mm-hmm. That's great. I like this, too. Like, you could, the fact that you could just roll this thing in Side action, remove an exhaustion, and then put it on a horse. Super good. River Scald. Look at this guy. He's awesome. It'd be difficult to play the flute while riding a horse, though. And also, it's kind of like a David Bowie vibe on this thing. <laughs> kind of like it. That's not a bad vibe. No, not a bad vibe. Uh, action, horse, and a music note. This is back to you. Harsh Melody. When you draw one or more cards during your turn, you can place an exhaustion token on this unit to place a number of wound tokens equal to this unit's attack value on a target unit. Yep. All right. Pain Shaman. This is a lion dice with a leaf. This is so good. The river scald? Oh my gosh. Yeah. The fact that, just imagine this sequence. Play the river scald. Let's say we attack with it. That would be insane. So let's not, not even do that. Use Soraya's uh, side action to draw a card. Exhaust here. Do three to something on your opponent's side of the board. Play the pale steed mount. This thing now goes underneath it. Loses its exhaustion. 
Attack with a Pale Steed or Unigard with a Pale Steed, it comes back into play, use its ability again. Draw a card again. I mean, come on. Sounds like you have a plan. <laughs> I like That's it. Right. It's super good. It's super good. And then look at how beautiful it is, too. Uh, Pain Shaman. After this unit receives damage, you can deal a damage to target unit or remove a wound token from a target unit. Yeah. I don't run those, those lion dice. Lion. They're lying to me. Raptor Herder. Now, I need to look. Okay, I'm definitely on Charm. Uh, a leaf, which could be me. When this unit comes into play, place a Raptor Hatchling Conjuration onto your battlefield. I love these guys. The Raptor Hatchlings. Group tactics too. After you declare three or more attackers, you may add two to this unit's attack value for the remainder of the turn. It's this is a rush. Attack. This is a big board strategy. We're not big board people. <laughs> Beast mage. It's big board time. Two music notes and a basic. Terrifying one can't be blocked or guarded by units with one or less. Transform two. While you don't have the first player token, the attack life and recover value of this mm -hmm. is increased by two. It's just a weird unit. I just don't quite get it. I mean, I get it. It's just like I don't know how you would develop a synergy around it. I don't know that it's synergistic. It's just a basic three three cost unit. You know, it is it is one thing. Here's what you could do. If you're running the if you're running the music note dice. Mm -hmm. Sympathy. You could have one of those in your deck. And if you are going first, you get it in your first five. And if you're going second, you don't, or something like that. Sure. You know, that kind of a vibe. I mean there's you, that's what that first five enables. Yeah. That kind of we, decision exactly. Do you know first or second player before you get your first five? I think so. Interesting. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Does anyone in chat know? Yeah, somebody knows. I, I guarantee you at least five people in chat know the answer to that question. All right, Beast Warrior. Action, We're side action, beyond. music note. All these music notes. After you declare three or more attackers, you may add one of this unit's attack value for the remainder of the turn. While you do not have the first player token, the attack recover life value, et cetera, is increased by one. What's the, what's the scoop on this? Is there like a Phoenix Born that gives, that, that gives up first player a lot or something? I don't think so. I think it's just literally cards that are particularly notable on... So you're just sequencing in, in a, a weird way. Hmm. Yep. Psychic Vampire, action, and a ceremonial goat. <laughs> Lobotomize one. When this unit is destroyed as a result of a spell attack, counterspell, dice, ability, etc., that opponent must discard a card of their choice from their hand. Mm. Seems good. I don't have the goats, though, and I don't want them. And <laughs> I don't want them. Master Vampire, a goat or a horse... A knife and a basic. Blood drain one. <laughs> how fu how hilarious is that, by the way? That you can either essentially suck the blood of a goat or a horse, which is very vampire-y. With a knife. With a knife, and then you sing about it. Yeah. Sing the song of the vampire. Yeah. Blood. That's not for me. Yeah, I don't want it. I don't, think it was, I don't think it was ceremonial. Yeah, I do goes. like this, though. Sleeping bear. Action, two leaves. I love it. He just the honey on his paws. Slumbering one, this unit comes into play, place an exhaustion token on it. Yeah, nice. Just a Snorlax to the game. It's a 4 4 2. So it's a great value, but you don't get to use it. It's got I'm so many gonna, I'm going to put it in, in the maybe pile. It's got the, it's the right resources. Because Mayoni makes that sing, man. Can't use it the first turn, but you can still use Mayoni's ability with it. Uh, Is it unexhausted? It has to be unexhausted. Ah, okay. Get it out of here. But if I end up going with the. Uh, uh, there's the unit that when you have a unit that gets exhausted. You can put that into play. And the, the guardian. I want to see if that, guardian. if that can yeah. work or not. No sleeping with me around. Because he's got that four attack, which if I can do that, Mayoni can, you can play this thing, and then she can immediately side action to do four to something, mm -hmm. which could be really good. We've got some great ideas here coming in from the chat. First of all, first player is decided uh, after you choose your first five, so that oh. strategy wouldn't work. But Philip, on the, on the serious strategy here, you could mount those allies during their off turn and then dismount them during their on turn. Oh, there it is. That's pretty cool. I'm that's gonna put them in my stack. That's probably that exactly what they were up to. Yeah. But can a beast warrior really ride a horse? It just doesn't seem feasible. <laughs> but they're doing it. Uh, I mean, that would be a terrifying thing. One of these beast mages on a pale steed? I'm going home. Yeah, I'm out. You know? <laughs> Never again. Huntmaster. A frog and a music note with a basic. Call the hunt. When this unit would be declared as an attacker, you can place a panther spirit conjuration onto mm. your battlefield. Mm, I love those panthers. Panther spirit. Look how cool that panther spirit looks. And you just so part at the end of the round. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. It's a cool theme. There's a deck that's going to be good for it. Yeah, I think some of those are looking for a lot of units, and they all attack together, the raptors and all that. Yeah. Imperial Ninja. Hello. Action, snake, and a heart. Interrogate when this unit deals damage to a phoenix form by attacking. Name a card. 
The opponent that controls the Phoenix Worm reveals their hand they must discard all copies of the named card. No. That is for a much better player. <clears throat> yeah, not good enough. Not good enough yet. Sun Sister. Sun Sister. This is Sun also the Sister. kind of card that's like, ah, we need a we need a metagame answer yeah. to whatever's Hopefully degenerate. Hopefully that's not as necessary yeah. the second time around. Sun Sister, action, uh, divine die and a basic. Resurrect, when this unit leaves play, you may search your discard pile for an ally with a title other than this unit's title and place it into your hand. Nice. And two, two, two. That can be good. I'm not running the angel die. I'm pretty much sorted on these three, by the way, just from all the conjurations and stuff. I'm here, and I can possibly splash. So I'm, I think I'm just going to start looking at the... Beast Tamer, action, uh, charm, and a heart, and a basic. So I think we could both play that. Mm -hmm. Diminish one after an opponent has declared attackers. You can spend a resource to reduce the attack value of each attacking unit by one for the remainder of the turn. I don't hate that at all. Three attack, three life, two recover. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. I would put it in my maybe pile if you're not going yeah, to. Yeah, you can, you can have that maybe. Ooh, look how creepy. The hollow. Hollow. Mm. Whoa. Is that one of those? Is there a... Oh, that's a tongue. That is, <laughs> that's a tongue. I thought it was a snake. <laughs> Surprise tongue. I thought it was the old mouth snake. Uh, music note. I guess a tongue is a mouth snake. Or an illusion die. So you could technically play it. I could play it both ways. When this unit plays... Leaves play as a result of a spell, ability, or dice power you control. You may spend a horse to remove all exhaustion tokens from a target unit. Okay, that's pretty cool. Poltergeist, after a player's declared attackers, you can spend a wolf to remove this card from the game. If you do, reduce the attack value of the target unit by two for the remainder of the turn. It's not terrible. It's just creepy. It's not terrible, it's just creepy. I'll put it in the stack. All right. Battle Seer. Uh, wolf, you playing wolves and music notes. I got wolves and music. All right. Uh, battle transplant. This unit is declared as an attacker or leaves play. You can draw a card. That's pretty good in my... In my <laughs> just take yeah, that. That's pretty good there. Anytime you just have a card draw, come on now. And it pumps the horses. Yep. Crimson Bomber. Action, two ceremonial. Detonate three. Destroy this unit to place one wound token on up to three target units. I don't need that. I'm looking at my conjurations to see how many uh, ceremonial dice I've got real quick. Because that might be my third color. One second. Ooh, we got new Enchanted Violinist. That's necessary. She was so good. All these units that got changed are so good. That Blood Archer, man. The Blood Puppets. Forget gonna, that Blood I'm Archer. I'm going to put these in my stack. That Blood Archer was so good. Didn't he come into play and do like three damage? He was, we'll get to him. He was crazy. Uh, Fire Archer, action and a ceremonial ambush one. This unit comes into play. You can deal a damage to a target unit or Phoenix Born. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Ambush, like, three, I think. So I like Archer. these because, like, I need to be able to get rid of units to make my snakes good, etc. You know, that's very true. In fact, the Fire Archer, how do you not play that, given your psyche? Just direct damage and snake. Direct damage, fire, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what you got to do. Polarity, mage, action, divine, or music note. Uh, take side action, resource, remove an alteration spell from a unit. Probably not going to play yeah, it. Yeah, that's out of here. It's got divine magic. got a lot of text on it. Light Swordsman. I love this art. Look at that. Look at that art. Mm. Uh, side action or an action, which is pretty sweet. Music note and a divine. Not going to be able to play it. But it looks good. <laughs> it's got battle advantage, too, which yeah. is nice for me. Sonic Swordsman. Lion. Well, you could, you could get into divine, right? I, I think... I think it's going to end up, if anything, going to be ceremonial. You may, have you made the decision? Though? I'm almost there. If you've made the decision, let's just make it. Well, there might be a unit that comes along. It's just like, well, it's nag. just so good. Yeah, okay. I'm just just keeping it in the back. Uh, but these aren't these aren't them. Place two wound tokens. That I mean, you know, all of these things are great. It's not bad. Uh, Reaping angel. We got to have the angel and also the knife. That's just so thematic. Yeah, you like you also like angels. I don't know if I like Angels of Death. That's one thing I know about you. I mean, you visit that Precious Moments Chapel every year. I know that for sure. <laughs> On the way to Gen Con. <laughs> oh man, did you, you remember those Phillips, Phillips? Those photos Philip posted of him at Precious Moments. Uh huh. It still murders. I'll me never forget. Yeah, yeah. I've been We're gonna there. Pass on that. Oh, uh, dude, I love the look of this guy, the old Fire Fish Man, uh, Immortal Commander. Two divine with an action. Exert. Place an exhaustion token on this unit. Command while while this unit has one or more exhaustion tokens on it, the attack value of all other units you control is increased by one. I remember this guy. When you would leave play, uh, leave your discard pile, you can spend a lion to deal two damage to a target unit. Well, that's cool. He's good. He also looks awesome. This is so good for the horses. 
Leave your discard. Okay, that's yeah. less good. Rising Horde. Action, two ceremonial dice. Raise Fallen. This unit is destroyed, plus two Fallen Conjurations. Oh, it's the it's the on zombie one. Field. I'm not running the big board. You really need old Mowgli or whatever the that has like the nine battlefield mm -hmm. to just run a zombie deck. Yeah. Which I'm be not, fun. Not zombieing around necessarily. We got the uh, Grave Knights. Also need a goat and an angel. <laughs> you know. Like, you grab the goat. I'll get the angel. <laughs> meet me in the back. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, battle advantage and smite one. After this unit destroys the unit by attacking or counter, you can move a wound token from a target. Phoenix Warren. It's got too much. At th dude, at this point, just choose your ceremonial die and let's let's put the gas on. Yeah. Uh, Flash Archer. Yes, I can run that one. Double shot, side action, exhaust, deal damage to your target unit. Then you may deal one damage to your target unit. Oh, come on. And four attack. Look at that thing. Come on. Temple Elder. <laughs> I love this guy. Action, two basic, resourceful. When this unit comes into play, place a status token on this unit. At the beginning of the player phase, place a status token on this unit. Uh, wisdom, side action, and music note. Remove a status token from this unit if you do draw a card. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Need the music notes for that to matter. Mm, I'll put it in here. I've got the music. I've yep. got the draw. Uh, I've got the dancing. Jungle Warrior, action, music note, basic. This could be you. Last orders one. When this unit is destroyed, you can spend uh, basic to remove an exhaustion token from a unit. Love that. Inheritance one. When this unit is destroyed, you may place a status token on a target unit. You love that. But I don't, I don't have the music notes. Okay, I see. So these are meant to go together. You put the status on the John, the Temple Elder, and then you remove one to draw. It's a whole engine. Essence Druid, this mm. art mm. is slaying it. That's the essence. Uh, action, two music notes and a basic. One attack, four life. Spell recall. When this unit comes into play, search your discard pile for a ready spell and place it into your hand. I don't want anything to do with it. Right. Recursion. See ya. Yeah, no. Got Wolverine here. Oh, Frost oh, was thing. great, man. Action and a frog. Rapid healing when this unit would receive damage. You can spend any number of basics for each spent. Prevent a damage. Battle advantage. When this unit is in battle, it deals damage before any other units without battle advantage deal their damage. Only a 1-1. One, one. I don't need it. It's got frogs. I don't, I don't think I'm going to play it. It's cool, though. They're meant to be buffed and then, <laughs> you know, go work wreck. out. Yeah. Enchanted Violinist. You remember it? Hey, uh, we got a new one. Where's that? There it is. All right. And wait, that's different art. Yeah, there were a couple versions of the art. One was a, they had different promos with different art. Very cool. Uh, so the original was one attack, two life. The the Song of Sorrow is after a player discards one or more cards from their disc, their draw pile, you can spend a resource to place a wound token on a target unit. That's another after a player does X. The new one costs an action and a heart to play. Still has the Song of Sorrow, but it's a side action and an exhaust. Deal damage to a target unit and opponent controls. If it destroys that unit, after it's destroyed, that target opponent must discard a card off the top of the draw pile. Yep, 100%. Way cleaner. Super cool. Um, I'm not playing into that enough, but it's also one life where the, the other one was two. So, uh, I mean, it's a great change. I just don't want it. I'm going to put it in my pile because it's direct damage. Mm -hmm. we'll keep we on. know what's about to happen. Okay, here's, all the, here's some reborn yeah, magic. We're, we're getting into reborn. So, the original Hammer Knight was a goat and a leaf, which is right up my alley, uh, and a basic. He's long loved goats and leaves. After, well, These th two those things. Are, those are the resources. What I really like are giant <laughs> hammers. You remember that crag hammer from Spoils? How could I forget? It was yeah, literally the, the size of a mountain. Uh, anyways, Aftershock 1, when it deals damage by attacking or counter, you can place a wound token on a target unit, which is going to be really good if I have a bunch of direct damage so I can ping stuff off. Uh, four attack, three life. Let's look at the new one. Three attack instead of four. Four life instead of three, so they flip those. Okay, flip them. Also recovery, recovery two. two. Same cost to play. Aftershock one, after this unit destroys the unit uh, by attacking, you can deal a damage to a target unit. Alert, don't place exhaustion tokens on this unit as a result of countering. Oh, that's cool. You can just counter forever. That's super nice. Also, I love the change in text. It says when this unit deals damage, place a wound. This is when it deals damage, uh, deal a damage. So we might be getting away from that whole, you know, place a wound. You know why? Because... Games do this. They love to do this over time. It's like, well, place a wound is different from dealing damage, and so cards that prevent damage from dealing dealt don't prevent placing a wound. Infuriating. And then you call the judge over, and then everyone's like, ah, look at this new guy that doesn't understand how wounds and damage works, and it's a really awkward situation. So hopefully they'll just keep it clean. Damage is damage. We're not placing wounds. We're, we're dealing damage. Agreed. Just make it clean. Fire Archer we've already seen. Mm -hmm. We have an extra copy of that, so I'm going to put it in my... We have Must have been a good these. card. Uh, Rose Fire Dancer. 
action and a mask with a basic. Distract, action, place an exhaustion token on a target unit. Three attack. That's for you. All right. Next, we get another update. Do you need to exhaust units? I mean, is that something you need to do? I don't have a mask. That's right. Blood Archer, the original, costs a knife, a heart, and two basics. Three attack, three life, two recover. Blood Oath 2, when you're declaring attackers, you can add two attacks to this unit. Two attack to this unit for the remainder of the turn if you do place two wounds on this unit. So take two, and I'm stronger by two. <laughs> battle advantage, when this unit is in battle, it mm. inflicts damage first. So good. The new one costs a goat instead of a knife, which is harder to get. A heart, still, and then one basic instead of two. Look at the text Look at box, the text. Zach. Bloodshot, side action, place a wound token on this unit to deal a damage to a target unit. I love it. And oh my gosh, do I love it. The deck. It's right into the stack. Also, uh, that's so many of these units get so interesting when you bring the mounts in, because it's like you use that ability a few times, and then you mount it, and then and re reset it. Come, come back around downtown. <laughs> All right, then we get a Living Doll original. Come back around downtown. That's right. right, 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 right. <laughs> we get a knife, <laughs> a heart, <laughs> ding, 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 and a basic. Uh, zero attack, three life, one recovery. Pain link, when this unit receives damage, you can spend a resource to inflict... X amount of damage to a target unit or unit. Sworn X is the damage received or this unit's life value, whichever is less. Too much. Then, ah, see, whenever this unit, and now the new one's a side action. The Genius. new one, you either spend a heart or a music note. I'm paying attention. And a knife. Yeah, don't worry. So it's one less resource cost. Pain Link 1 is a side action now. Move a wound token from this unit onto a target Phoenix Born. Mm -hmm. Zero attack, three life, one recovery. It's so much simpler. It's so much better. Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh. It's like the same Let's idea, put that in my stack. but we're just not over complicating things. Yep. I mean, this is just experience, right? It is experience. It's yeah. designer experience and it's time just seeing this stuff where it's like, is there a way to do this simpler? It's just like how over time, hopefully, if you guys are paying attention, uh, you simplify most things in your life, right? It's like, oh, I don't need seven coffee mugs. I yeah. only use this one. So yeah. I'm just going to get rid of the other six. Uh, but like this is this or is the kind of thing about. you see in a mature game, yeah. right? And it's like that last ten percent where you take a, it's doing what you want it to do, but you just find a way to say it simpler and yeah, just make, make it, it happen simpler. Yeah, one sentence. That's a big 20. step, and a lot of games don't do that. Uh, next, we get the anchor knot, the original. Yeah, this this thing was everywhere. Action basic zero attack, one life, one recover. Throw one during your turn. You can place an exhaustion on this unit to deal damage to a target unit. The new one, same cost, same attack, same life, same recovery. This is a reborn anchor knot. Throw one when this unit becomes comes into play, you may deal the damage to another target unit. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So it's just a one-time hmm. deal of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting because it doesn't have unit guard. So like it's not doing too much. It's blocking. It's literally doing a damage and blocking. It's blocking itself. Uh, or it's uh, it's coming into play doing one and then it's getting on a pale mount. And then it's coming back into play yeah, doing one again. You want it? For one, I mean, it's the cheapest way to have something riding a horse. Honestly, so I, I should probably put Can it. Can you in. put that on a T-shirt? Yeah, it's the simplest way. Yeah, put an anchor on. It's like the one person in the airport that <laughs> ever right. gets that in twenty Next years up, is going to be uh, amazed. They decided to go ahead and put your cousin on the card again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyone with like a strong beard, I feel like I'm naturally. My not, beard's not strong right now. It might get stronger in well, winter. Not like so. Jonathan has a. I, I feel like a strong beard right now. He's got like the. Or Rafe. Rafe is the one with the giant beard. One of our staff. It's members. out of control. Uh, but I think it's because your beard is darker than your hair, so yep. it, like it really is prominent. And anytime yep. I see like this isn't like a crazy crazy beard; it's just a prominent beard. It reminds me of you. Prominent. Anyways, the original. Uh, oh my gosh. Action. Yeah, it's I'm so funny. I'm just looking on the table, and the amount of text on this thing is like a dream. It's yeah, a the original Iron Worker. Um, it's a two attack, two life, one recover. I'm not even gonna read that crazy box. Look Can we it, pull though. that up? I just want to see the box. 1.0 Iron Worker. All right. You, do you want to read a book? You got it. Here gotta, we go. Now let's show the reborn iron worker. I'm not even going to read the old one. Yeah. Look, you get to see more of the feet. That's the right. The legs are more prominent uh, for sure. Over time, too, during the draw step, you may draw up to two additional cards. That's hilariously good. Look at what even was this old one up to? When it comes into play, place a status token on it. At the beginning of this player turn, place a status token on this unit. Anytime during your turn, remove any number of statuses. For each one removed, take an additional side action. Oh my gosh, yeah. Great. Just drawing more cards? Cool. I don't want it. If you need to draw extra cards, your deck's not any good. <laughs> you heard it here <laughs> first. Leech Warrior, we've seen that. All right, this is the last update we have from the units, or the allies. 
The Stormwind Sniper. Cost a mask, a knife, and a basic. Two attack, one life, one recover. Ambush two. When this unit comes into play, you can inflict two damage. That's the one I was thinking of. So the yeah. new one, the new the reborn Storm Stormwind Sniper, is an action and a mask and a knife, no basic. So okay, one so cheaper. Has ambush one. When it comes into play, you can deal a damage. It also has concealed. Can't be targeted by attacks, spells, abilities, or dice powers and opponent controls. Okay, so it's going to come in and uh, it's got some of those can't words on it, which... Uh, it just can't be targeted. Yeah, which is like fine. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I have uh, a lot of thoughts about that. Neither of us have the combination of uh, magic to make that happen. No, we don't. Uh, Frostfang. We already saw that one. Did we? Mm-hmm. Yep. Extra. Uh, Crimson Bomber saw that. Yeah. Blood Archer saw that. Living Dog Must saw that. Must be extra, that. like, corset. Hello we there. I seen the Holy Knight, though. Oh, Holy, holy Knight. Holy Knight. I love this art. I love this art. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh. Action. A uh, lion and two divine and a basic. We can't can't do that. You need but to start running the divine magic because you love everything that comes out of the divine stuff. I just don't think it's Maoni. I I'll look at She's it. She's gold. She's a new god. She's got to be. Yeah. All right. Next, she we get Shield Mage. Action and a lion. Exert, side action, place an exhaustion token on this unit. Protective aura, while this unit has one or more exhaustion tokens, the life value of all the units you control is increased by one. Yep. Now, see, this is the kind of, the shield mage is the kind of ally that makes ashes so interesting, because you could run one divine die, and run a, a number of shield mages, and you're running a, a rush, a swarm deck, right? Like a, the zombie. It's deck. really good in a swarm deck. You run a single divine die, so you can always cast a shield mage and buff your you know your twenty miss spirits to two life. It's it, it practically writes itself. <laughs> yes, she indeed. Kidnapped, she kidnapped herself, Zach. <laughs> you said it yourself, dude. All right, I'm putting this over here. Putting this over here. Okay. So is that far stack Phoenix Borns? The red yes. stack. Okay, so there's only two stacks left. We got stacks oh, on three stacks. stacks left. Do you want me to take over? I feel like you've been like I've been reading a been, lot. You probably yeah, I'm gonna go horse. get some more water. Um, so the next, what, what's that? What's that saying? These are all action and reaction spells. Yeah, and then there's alterations, and then there's the ready spells that aren't conjuration summoning. So the things that would take up your spell board slots, yeah. basically. I'm gonna okay. get some more water. You need anything? Yeah, no, I don't need anything. And the nice thing is, though, literally this one sort where we're going through all these cards and peeling stuff off is gonna make for an awesome deck building experience once we get That's there. That's right. I'm here for the deck building experience. I'll just I'll I'll start reading and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna know exactly what you want. You're gonna make decisions for me. I know, you know exactly. It's based on the magic. Now, also, we've got some some things that are gonna change. Anybody out there have any uh, have any Ashes deck building tips? Particularly people who are uh, maybe good at. It? Although I'll take tips from anybody. But you know. If you're good at it, it's particularly relevant. That's what. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying it. You know, change of revenge. Okay, nice. We summon and empower. Bedzak's gonna like this new empower. Okay, got those all sorted. You know what? I think. I think the best thing to do is to look at the ready spells because they're they're kind of probably the most important ones. I think ready spells are where it's at. Uh, let's see who's got it. Okay, we we got some. You got advice coming in here. Uh, okay, you're done baking. Says so sure, Steve. Okay, well I guess that's coming up. Uh, Bass like boss saying, oh good at it. I'm out. Uh, Chris Short is saying, Old Iron Worker was also good for status token generation. Use String Mage to swap them around. You're done bacon now trolling me by saying Knives Out is bad, which is exceedingly wrong. It's hard for me to even successfully, or to a degree that I feel comfortable with, um, explain to you how not bad Knives Out is and how truly great that movie is. But that's a, a stream for another day. Uh, Aaron H. saying, just do it and then test a lot. Good advice for all games. Philip Lauteo is saying, I liked running new ideas with the horses and the crescendo to trigger it. Marissa saying, uh, besides make sure you have all the dice types you need to play all your cards, a mistake that I've made before. Chris Shorter, start with ready spells. Yep, yeah, good. I'm doing it. And then <laughs> Bacon saying, you really want to look at Battlefield slash Spellborn for your chosen Phoenixborn. That's correct. Sometimes you have a great idea and then it's like, if I have these five things added, it's going to be incredible. And then you have a battlefield of four, and obviously it will never happen. Same with the spell board. You really want to know exactly what spells you're going to have on your back row. Uh, and that's a good place to start cutting during the deck building process, too. So, like, 
I've got my spell board is four with Soraya here, so I just am going to have to make some tough choices. Aaron H said, I built a Koji deck while y'all were streaming. Well, that's awesome. Especially once you know all the cards, it's probably really easy to kind of figure out which ones fit pretty quickly. Uh, Link, you're at saying play with theme instead of just synergy. Good ideas. And then uh, 36 uh, saying, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Doing great. Hope you're doing well also. All right, I'm going to kick it off here with a ready spell called Blood Transfer. Now, here's the question. These go onto your spell board? Yes. And maybe I might just put the ones that go onto that. Wait, there's a reaction spell in here. I don't want those. Oh, there's not actually a lot of ready spells here, is there? I'm going to separate these out so it's just easier for us. It's all the spell board stuff. You might, you know, if I were doing this again, I might start with anything that goes on my spell board in a single pile and choose like my four, that's a good idea. You know what, if I were doing this again, mm -hmm. anything that goes on your spell board that takes up a spell board slot, go through all those cards first and determine your four. And then from there, you look at the allies and the units and stuff, and then it's like, well, yeah, I can make a better decision. Now, of course, seeing certain allies and units might affect your spell board yeah. later on, but. It's kind of tough. In the grand scheme of uh, <clears throat> the game, maybe that's the best way to go. I don't know. And well, part of the ally thing too, right, is like, Understanding what units you want to play will determine how many spells you need to commit to the conjurations. Yeah, you're right. Blood transfer. Let's take a look. These are all going to be ready spells. Are going to go. You just want knives board. out? Yes, I was getting trolled. Trolled? So, yeah, they said it was. Uh, uh, you're done, Bacon. Who we we gotten into it before on this. Said that it was uh, not good. I know. I know. Hide your disbelief. Blood transfer is coming in here as a main action. It's a side action, you exhaust it. Knife and a heart. Deal two damage to a target unit you control. Okay. If you do, remove two wound tokens from another unit you control or one from your Phoenix Born. A heal spell, basically. Mm. Hurt what you have and heal what uh, you also have. I don't want it. Healing's for suckers, it always has been. Cut the strings, pulls the strings. Uh, main action, or uh, yeah, main action to play. And then you exhaust it. You spend a knife and a basic. So this is you. Mm -hmm. Deal three damage to you, you control, discard a target alteration spell. So if your snakes are getting run down by alterations, then it could be good for you. I love that art. Chant of Sacrifice, it's just too much. Wait. Do you, put it, you put it into play as a thing? Okay, it's a knife and an angel to cast, to put it on your spell ward. Okay, we could make this happen. After a player has declared blockers, Place an exhaustion on this spell to destroy a unit you control. If you do, for the remainder of the turn, a target unit you control adds two to its attack value or gains battle advantage or armored two. Battle advantage being its first, and then uh, armored being you prevent two when it takes two. Dude, look at that paragraph. Yeah, it scared me. I mean, that's pretty good. I ran away from it. So basically, if anyone declares blockers, you can exhaust this. Are you seriously running the divine dice? I don't, I don't know. I keep saying that. I think you aren't. Look at this Law of Repentance. Oh my, are, wait, are these the cards from that deck that's getting reworked? Jericho mm -hmm. or whatever? We didn't even open those. Okay. Let me, let me look real quick. This Law of Repentance is incredible. It reminds me of Doctor Strange, but cooler, actually. Side action and an angel. Are you an angel? Are you an angel? <clears throat> when this... Uh, no, I don't think I'm running into one. When it comes into play, if you control an ally, remove two wounds from your Phoenix Born. So heal the Phoenix Born. That's cool. Uh, when a player would place one or more dice into their active pool, from their exhausted pool, deal a damage. Nah, we don't need that. That's a, that's a strategy that's going away, I think. By the way, I think if I was going to play Mayoni Divine, I would scrap the Silver Snakes. Because the Silver Snakes require charm and nature. Mm -hmm. So then... That's fair. Divine forces you to be, you could technically do nature, charm, divine. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if she really wants to go divine, she's got to level up. Okay, I'm with it. I actually like the idea uh, as much as I hate it. Uh, magic Siphon. Main action and a music note to get it into play. Looks so good. So this is you. This is me. Side action, 
change the die to your, in your active pool to a side of your choice, change the die in a target player's active pool to a side of your choice. Mm. So a little uh, dice manipulation. Illusioning. I know these are good. I'm going to put it in here and I'm not going to run it. <laughs> Dude, that art's good, though. I know. Guilt Link, uh, main action and your music note coming in. Look at that, getting pointed at. It's awful. Mm. When your Phoenix Born receives one or more damage, place an exhaustion token on this spell. Place a wound token on a target unit or Phoenix Born. Player that controls that targeted unit may discard one ready spell they control or one unit to prevent it from being placed. Yeah, I don't need that. It's fine. Law of Domination. I mean, really good. It is good. Law of Domination. We do an angel and a main action. When it comes into play, choose an opponent, choose a unit they control, choose a unit you control. They deal damage to each other, equal their attack value. That's pretty good for you. Cannot be prevented. This is divine, right? It's divine. If you don't make the divine stack, you'll never choose what's going to possibly get you. That's weird. So it's only when it comes into play. Yeah. And then it sits there, and then you can meditate it off the board, I guess. Doesn't it have text no, that it, says? You can't, med it's bound. You can't meditate it, but it's fleeting, so it only lasts till the end of the round. So it's like a, a super event, basically, a super spell. Mm -hmm. But then you're stuck with it. Like all the laws. Oh, and then it goes away at the end of the turn. Right, that's right. All the laws do that. They come in, they do something awesome, they stick around, and they go away. Yeah. <laughs> like all great laws, they go away when about the turn they come into play. Bass like boss saying, Zach's over here refusing to admit he will be end up on nature term ceremonial. No, I haven't admitted it. That's what I've got. Steven, someone was asking earlier, what, what dice did you end up on? I'm on uh, Sympathy s Charm Illusion. That's nice. So we have five dice represented? Yeah. Very good. What's up, Damon B? Good morning. Uh, good day and good morning from Down Under. Must mean Florida. <laughs> Excited to wake up to some Ashes deck building, which I find a bit baffling due to the lack of restrictions to guide you, but looking forward to giving it a go. Yeah, that's the thing. You get, you, it's going to be overwhelming at first. Um, you just plow through it and build something. It'll be bad. Play it. Change it. And, and eventually it'll be it'll okay. It'll be good. Yeah. yeah. Sacred Ground costs a lion. <laughs> when an opponent would use a spell that affects all units or each unexhausted unit, you may discard the spell. So this is a meta. This is a meta. We're getting obliterated by something bad. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Drain Vitality, ready spell here. It's a side action, potentially, or a main. And a basic, it can use a knife ability to deal a damage to a target unit. And if you do, remove a wound token from a target unit. So you can do a little kill. But it also has, and we've got more birds here. Look at that bird on there. It's like a magic finch. finch. Yeah. And then it also has a, a no, I don't know birds. music when version. They play more wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> Remove a status token from a target unit. If you do, place a status token on a target unit. You could probably build to this if you were uh, snaking around. Now, it, it would make sense, by the way, to have charm and music for the snakes, because you're, you know, you're doing the whole charm yeah. thing. Da, 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 yeah, da. but this is actually horrible if you're... If my opponent has it, as I'm mm -hmm. a snake player, this would be miserable. It would be miserable. I, I would put this in my deck for the first ability. Here you go. We'll at least put it in the pile. Join the hunt. Look at that Princess Mononoke style rocking right there. Um, one music note. Mm -hmm. After you declare attackers, you may place one exhaustion token on this spell to place one exhaustion token on an unexhausted unit you control that is not attacking. If you do, add two to the attack value of the unit you control for the remainder of the turn. You know I'm running this. A five battle advantage seaside raven. Yeah, get out of town. Get out of town. Confusion spores. Oh, look at this confused flutist. Uh, one heart. Side action. It's smart to hand me one. I should have been doing that to you. Though. Target unit. Yeah, you learned. We, we, you know, Kaizen. You were over there being like, ah, I wish I could see the card. And then it's like, oh, I can just hand that. You're also putting them on the, on the table, though. Oh, okay. So that was helpful. Yeah. Target unit cannot block or guard for the remainder of the turn. That's good. And then focus, you can spend an additional to take an additional side action. Hmm. So you basically take something out that can't block or guard. That's pretty good for you. And you've already got the heart, right? Well, I'd have to spend a music, though. Mm. No, you don't. Oh, for the extra action. Okay. Yeah, and you don't need that. Yeah, you could run one of these, put it out first turn, first so, five. Spoiler alert. <clears throat> um, there's a card called Hypnotize. Yeah. I think, it, and I think that's what... You, why not both? Well, because you use first five and get the one you want. 
Or have two. I think hypnotize is the one where they can't block you. What so if you, you have hypnotize name? and confusion spores? Put it in your stack. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, I'll put it in the Come stack. Come on, man. I'll put it in the stack for you. Frostbite. Deal the damage to a target unit or phoenix spawn whenever uh, it... Oh, you can just trigger that forever. And then focus, change the activation. To Is that an ice frog? Cheaper. Yeah, it's an ice frog. Frogs don't bite, though. I, Guys. I, I like this. Direct damage. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, direct damage. Yeah, you can't get away from it. You know exactly. No matter what you do, you can't get away from it. Are you telling me I did, uh, did I just, damage directly when, or something? When I'm playing games, that seems very valuable to me. Yeah. No, it's, I know. It's, it's not control in that you can't do anything. It's control in that you've done it, but now I'm removing it. It's a good bet. <laughs> it's something that cannot be avoided. So, like, in Thrones, it was the same way, right? So it was burn. But you were playing choke. So you would play it where it's like they just can't do it in the first place? Yeah. I think, I don't know which one's meaner. Is it meaner to, to not let them do it? Or is it meaner to let them think it's they're going to do it? It's probably meaner to not let them, let them do it. Like they think they're going to do it, and then you take it away? No, you know what? No, it's meaner to do burn, for sure. Because, like, choke, at least you know the score. Going the in? the moment you're, you're yeah. starting, it's like, oh, okay. So everything's going to be really expensive, and it's gonna I'm going to hate the game. With you, it's like... Look, I have my look setup. At, I'm doing it, finally. Die. And then it's like, ah, here's a bucket yeah. of molten lava. Yeah. Fire and and I can just do it because no matter how good your deck is at attacking, defending, or playing the fundamentals of the game, eh, here's a number. Hypnotize. Here we go. Is there a new version? Nope. Old version. Uh, the Empower is the one that's new. We'll get to that. Two hearts. Choose a target unit you control. For the remainder, it cannot be blocked or guarded. But compare this to uh, compare this to the other one. What's the other one? Uh, it's That's expensive. That's two hearts for a no block. So Drain Vitality is deal damage or you can it's the, start it's the confuse the confusion spores. So the confusion spores, you target a unit they can't block. The but it costs nothing. Yeah, but hypnotize is I choose my unit mm -hmm. uh, and they literally can't be blocked or guarded. How often are you gonna, I mean how often are you gonna You just need one to stop my snake. Can, They're both going to be there. You can make your decisions, okay? I feel like we're getting into teamwork Marvel champions all over again here. Since when was I? I hate being the voice of reason in deck building. It's insane. Yeah, you were never that person. I know. <clears throat> I've grown up. Empower. The old one. The we got a new one. one. We got a new one. So this is two leaves. This is 1.0. It has two leaves. A lot of text. Look at that art, though, uh, dude. Look at that art. It's great. Just art. look yeah. at the art. Look at that snake. He's ready to go. It's one of these that has after things have happened, a lot of stuff happens, and we're tell me what the it. new one does. I can't wait. New one is a side action to play instead of a main action. It's a basic instead of two leaves. Wow. Once it's out, spend a main action and exhaust it. Spend a target, uh, a leaf or a music note. So you can just spend a leaf, one leaf. Place a status token on a target unit you control. That's mine. Oh my gosh. Give it to me. Let's Focus one. Then you may remove any number of status tokens from a unit you control to deal damage to a target unit equal to the number of status tokens removed. This is literally... It's a dream come true. Built it's for disgusting. my deck. Here you go. Can I see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, there were some hints with the art that it might go into me. Yeah, I mean, this is something, <laughs> something made me think it was going to be good for me. Uh, Chant of Revenge. It's a new one, yeah? Yeah, we got the new. Uh, it goes from, for instance, uh, whenever a unit you control is destroyed, do a thing, to... What's the cost on it? One knife. And now it's a side action mm. and a knife. After an ally you control is destroyed, place a status token on the spell if it has no status tokens on it. Then you can take a side action and exhaust it. Remove a status token from the spell to deal a damage to a target phoenix point. 100%. That's so much cleaner. So you can stack it up and then you can use it. It's great. Yeah, I love that way better. Because whenever a unit is, you control is destroyed, you may place one exhaustion token on the spell to deal one damage to target unit or phoenix born versus units destroyed, put a status on something, and then remove the status, do a damage. Yeah, and the, the reason that's, that's so important is like the timing. Instead of it being, we have cards that we can play back and forth when something happens, it's we have effects on the board that happen when something happens. And it doesn't matter what order they, they happen. They don't need to interact with each other. They don't interact. Yeah, yeah. very good. That, that might go on my deck, though. Expand energy. Goat. Here comes the goat. That's me. Select one die, re-roll it, place it in your active pool. Yes. That that was in the game. Like uh, That was from turn one for a lot of decks that was in there. Well, why wouldn't you play it? You spend a goat, and then you get an extra die every round? 
Yeah. I don't think that that card's got to change, right? I don't think so. I thought we weren't recurring dice anymore. Oh, maybe not. I know we're not removing dice. Is there a new one? No. There's not a new one anyway. But I don't know if this was Corset or not. Well, it looks like it's got coal all over it. I mean, they they showed up. Didn't Nick say like ten dice? No, no, bringy backies. I, I know there's no removal of the dice. Hmm. Now Philip's saying it changed. What did it change to? Who's got it? And where do you find this information? Are you guys playtesters? You know something? No, look, don't? it's on the screen. We don't have it. We're Action missing it. Did you not cut draw it out? cards until. Oh yeah, I saw this in the article today. Draw cards until you have two cards in your hand. Draw until you have two cards in your hand. Oh well, that's way different. Don't mind me. Huh? Do I want this? You don't have goats. I uh, can't have. Oh it. no, it's a basic now. You can have it. Oh, everybody you, can have you it. You too can have it. Everybody can have it. What's card draw worth in this game? Well, you have all those abilities. They're like, oh, you can draw a card, you can do this other thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and that's actually pretty good because you're at two cards, you can play it, and you draw up till two. But in, if you have abilities that are instead of drawing, mm. you can do that twice. Mm -hmm. mm. I guess. Could be. We're going to look at the timing chart. Uh, I feel like we're missing. Are, what about these cards? These are reaction spells. Are you sure, though? There it is. Oh, there it is. Come on. Action. Oh, it's because it's an action spell discard Re instead of a ready spell. Instead of a ready spell so spell board. It became an action spell. Oh, I don't need it if it's an action spell. Why it's not? a play the card, do the thing. Trade one basic for most of the time, one card. Or if it's the last card, you're drawing two. Two cards if it's the last one, yeah. You can always meditate down to... Back. All right, I'll, I'll put it in the stack. I'm just going to stack it. So, so that's fine. interesting. Shifting glad, mist in there? Glad we have it. What's it look like? Uh, shifting mists. A lot of mist. It's shifting around. Moving around. Uh, also, it's got Aerodel on it if you want to actually have helpful that, that was advice. That was useful information. <laughs> I'm just going to lay these down. Fear. Fear is your weakness. I don't think it's changed. It must, though. This card was the Bugatti. That doesn't mean it's got to change. That's right. They're not making all the cards bad now? That's not the goal, I Dang. don't think. Let's look at Shifting Mist, though, while we're here. Because this, this card... Uh, this card. <laughs> this card. This one right here. Main action, mask. Side action. Change two dice in your active pool to a side of your choice. You're playing that. Yeah, shut That's the just front going door. straight in. Hypnotize, we've already seen. Abundance. We got a new abundance. You're on check for new. All right, I need duty. to see it. Abundance. It's a table, yeah, a lot yeah. of people eating. I love that. Uh, all players may drop to two cards. Wait, free. is that the character you're playing? Yeah. You're playing the dinner party? Yeah, but she doesn't. Uh, a lot of her cards I, I, I despise. I only want the Raven. I mean, I like the concept. The playmat that had her with the dinner party? Yeah. All players may drop to two cards. For each card they cannot or do not draw, deal one damage to their Phoenix Born. Reduce the damage. Uh, your Phoenix Born receives by one. And then, yeah, this is a mill thing. I'm not, I'm not into it. It goes right here. She was the original kind of mill hero. But I'm taking it in a different direction. Protect. One leaf, one knife. Are you on leaves and knives? You yep. are. This is me. When it comes into play, place three status tokens on it. Okay. Discard it when there's no status tokens on it. Okay. So did you have some spells that maneuver status tokens from cards in play? I have stuff that maybe. When I will eventually want those, yeah. When a unit you control would receive damage, you remo remove any number of status from this spell. For each one removed, prevent one damage. Hmm. Could be good. Protect those snakes. Don't step on them. OK. We'll put it in the stack. Strengthen. OK. One knife, one leaf. OK. These are my flavors. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Side action, add two to a target unit's attack value for the remainder of the turn. Shut up. You need to use that with Mayoni. Mayoni. Do you need big snake energy? I mean, do you need to, <laughs> do you need to attack? When the snake's hitting, it needs to it go. It needs to hit hard. Seven? What do you, what's it? Oh, it's status tokens, right? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think strength is so good with Mayoni, no matter what unit's on the table. Yeah. Strengthen it and then snap it. Cut the strings. We've already seen that one. Purge? We haven't seen Purge. Uh, discard off the top of their draw pile. Discard an additional. No. Mill. 
Blood transfer we've seen. Small sacrifice we have not. And it's gross. This card is gross. I don't like blood. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't like seeing it. Neither do I like experiencing it. Believe him. One uh, knife here. Deal a damage to a target unit. If you do, you may deal one to a target unit on an opponent's battlefield. Focus one. If both are exa unexhausted, you may place an exhaustion on both units instead of damage. Let me see this. That's kind of weird. I get it, though. It's good. Oh, yeah. It's like your big bird in my mouse. <laughs> All right, I'll exhaust ah, my yes. mouse. Okay, cool. Classic card game. Bird my, big, mouse. my big bird in your mouse. Chant of Protection here, one basic, one discard. When it comes into play, place three status on it. When your Phoenix Board would receive damage, you can block it with your status token. So that's a Phoenix Born Protector card. Yeah, don't need it. Chant of the Dead, Knife. When an ally you control is destroyed, place a status token on this. If it has three or more status tokens, you can discard it to select three exhausted dice, put them in your active pool. I'm going to guess that one's changing. Do we have Chant of Revenge anywhere? Mm. I'm going to guess, mm. yep. Chat says it's changed. Oh, Protect Change is called Cover now. That's what's happening. Oh, they're changing the names on us. They changed the names. Sorry, go, let me, uh, where's the art on it? Let's look at Cover. Uh, Cover's got a frog now. I don't think it had, I think it was Leaf uh, Knife previously. I don't, is it in your hand? What is? The card that we were just talking about? Oh, I don't know. Does that help? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I don't need the laws. I think we've already seen those. Royal. Let's look at Royal Charm. Oof. How cool is that? Look, it's got all the symbols on it. On the necklace. Mm, that's cool. It's a basic. After you spend a Charm or Divine Power Symbol, you may place an Exhaustion Token on this spell to place that die onto a target unit you control. It's considered to be placed by its dice power ability. That's so cool. So you buff a unit, or you spend a, a thing, and then you, you put it on the unit. Yeah, so charm That's sweet. doesn't work with charm anymore, though, because charm's a negative to your opponent. So you would only really use it with divine. Oh, you control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will probably change where you can yeah. use it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I love this card. I like the idea of having a necklace on, too. Memory Theft. Look at a player's hand. Discard a card of your choice from that hand. If they do or cannot place one wound, nah. We're just agreeing we're not discarding cards from things. I don't know. This is what I live with. Yeah, that's fine. Leo. Augury. I'm just going to read the text, and if it's interesting enough, you can decide if it might go right. in. Search your draw pile for a card with a magic play cost of X. Reveal it. Place it in your hand. Shuffle your draw pile. Remove a status token from this spell. Yeah. It's a music note. Anyway. We don't need it. Yeah, we don't need it. Dark Presence, another music note. Um, all units you control now have Fog of War, which means if they deal damage to a Phoenix Born, they place the top card of their draw pile on the bottom of their draw pile, and then they discard the top card of their draw pile. So all your units are now, like, hmm. milling them. Interesting. Milly vanilly. Uh, you know, I should probably run that, because I've got the mm -hmm. kind of the light mill. What's the downside? There isn't one. Okay, it's in the stack. I hate it, but it's there. What's the downside? Oof. Hexbane. A lot of text here. Get ready. After an opponent uses an ability or dice power okay. to place a die into your exhausted pool. Oh, that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, it's gone. May as well burn it. Resonance. Got some birds on it. Birds coming out of books. We got books and birds. Is Bird, this Harry Potter? Birds books. Is that? No, it's not. Select two dice in your exhausted pool when it comes into play. Place them into your active pool on the side of your choice. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Chant of Protection, we've seen. Chant of the Dead, have we seen this? Nope, yeah, we've seen that. Gravity Training, what a card. After one or more exhaustion tokens are placed on a unit you control, spend a Divine or a Sympathy and place one exhaustion token on this spell to attach an Enhanced Strength Conjured Alteration to that unit. We need to find that enhanced strength uh, alteration. You got it in the alteration pile? Because this might be good for the snakes, and it's another reason to go to vine, which I like. I like it a lot, actually. Because your strength, your, your snake is going to get enhanced strength. If it gets exhausted down, it can keep getting stronger, and then eventually it's going to, ha, 
K7TO asking, is this an LCG in name? No, but in function, yes, essentially. What was the name of the card? Empower uh, Enhanced Strength. There it is. Yeah, it's got the black uh, back on there. So the unit now has remove all exha exhaustion from the unit at the end of the round, plus one, plus one. Yeah. I need to, when we get to those attachments, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the big attachments. Okay. I'm just saying a snake with gravity training is awesome. <laughs> He's flying. Changing winds. Uh, one music note comes into play. Draw two cards. Choose two cards in your hand. Place them on the bottom. Draw a card. Change a die. A lot of filtering. Probably a good card. Law of fear has the angel on it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. This is a good swarmy card. Add one to a bunch of units. Mm, not for us. Two shadows. Choose a target unit to gain the following illusion ability. If it receives damage, it's dead. Well, I can't help but run that. Oh, that could actually be really good for me. What's the dot? You don't the run the mask. OK. The reason it would be good for me is I have all the drag damage, though. Mm -hmm. so it's oh, like, put that so on true. and just ping for one, it's like they disappear. Oh, it's got to be a unit's attack or counter. OK. Yeah. Fair. They, they, they made the game that fair. Out, yeah. They made the game fair. And finally, Secret Door. Now, I believe this card was like the jam in the old Ashes meta. Really? After a reaction spell is played and its effects have been resolved, place an exhaustion on this spell to draw a card. Or discard this card to take the reaction spell just played from its owner's discard pile and place it in its owner's hand. So you could cycle your own reaction spells a bunch. It's disgusting. Gone. I don't even there want to think go. about it. You're going to hand me the extra. So yeah. All right. All right, we're here, man. We're Almost. Plowing through. It's just the, the process. It must be done. K7TO, great question. Um, I'm thinking of getting a non-co-op LCG. Is there a game that beats Android Netrunner? Well, this one's alive. <laughs> I mean, Netrunner's technically doing its thing. It's doing its thing. Nisei's, Nisei, Nisei's going. But, like, you know, it's different. Um, so I will say this. This has official publisher support. As far as game systems, <laughs> they're incomparable. I mean, it's it's apples and oranges to me. Netrunner is in a special box called Maybe Greatest Game Ever Made. And it's, it also is a, a very different hide-and-seek style experience. So it's not a dueling card game. Um, so if you're looking for a compare, it's just so hard to compare. And Netrunner is fantastic. Uh, Ash is also fantastic. Totally different experience. Uh, I feel not at all the same when I play those two games. Not even a, not even close. Not even remotely close. But I would do Ashes, because yeah, it's great. It's thirty dollars <clears throat> every three months. So if you just want to give it a crack, it's one hundred twenty dollars a year, which not a lot of things in life are one hundred twenty dollars a year. <laughs> Philip says this one. Yeah, this one. Uh, all right, you ready to? We're we're. It's not going to be long now. These are the two shortest stacks. It's not long now. It won't be long now. Uh, there are some upgrades here. I'm going to look at the alteration spells. Yes, please. They're near and dear to my heart. First one is Undying Heart. <laughs> uh, action, heart, and a basic. Plus two life, plus two recovery. There's a new version. So the Reborn version. Hold the phone. Is a side action and a heart. So it's way easier to play. The unit now has a fallen ability. It's inexhaustible. Undying. When this unit is destroyed, if it is an ally, you may place it in its owner's hand. Mm, that's pretty cool. Undying heart. Plus one, plus one. So respark is gone. Yes, it's gone. Thank Re respark goodness. was the ability when something leaves play, you can pay that to bounce it back Good to your hand. Good for them. Um, so. <clears throat> I got a bunch of allies over here, but I'm just not sure. I, I, yeah, I put it in the stack. Let's oh, put it in the stack. Put put stack. stack. All right, next we have regress, which is adorable. I don't think there's any, uh, nope, not updated. Alteration spell, look at that little cub. He's got a knife and a basic. When this, when attach, attaching, no, when it's, yeah, when attaching the spell, discard all of the alteration spells to this unit. It's a minus five attack on something. Wow. So you get rid of all alterations and make it nothing. I'm just gonna. That's pretty that good. I mean, stack. and also it's a knife. I don't have knife stuff. I do. Mark of the Red Flower, action or side action. Growing flames, side action, leaf and, or a music note. Place a status token on the attached unit. This unit now has the following ability. Fire Mastery. Exhaust. Remove two status tokens from this unit. If you do deal three damage to a target unit, you can only activate this ability during your turn. I like that a lot. So basically, you can spend a leaf. Oh my gosh. And place yeah. a status token on the attached unit. So you, yeah, you do this a thousand times from Sunday on that snake, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, explosive Growth. Uh, side action, a music note, and a leaf. Neither of us can play that. Yeah. So. See ya. Crystal Shield. Oh, but look at it, though. But look at it. 
Place two status tokens on this unit when attaching the spell. And it gets attack. Oh my gosh. Zach, read this card. When it's the biggest snake attaching on the Earth. Spell, place two st status tokens on this unit. Discard all the copies of explosive growth attached to this unit. X is the number of status tokens on this unit. It gets plus X attack. You double your snake's attack and you immediately get two status tokens? I may have to run a music note to play this card. Yeah, just a single music note. That's unbelievable. Explosive growth. Wow. That's your gold well, this snake is the thing, right like, there. It, this is literally the, probably what I would say is the least important stack, the alteration spells. Yeah. And that one card can totally change the path of your entire deck. All right. That's Chris, unbelievable. That's the whole deck right there. That might be the Explosive whole deck, yeah. snakes. <laughs> Crystal Shield, Action, Leaf, and a Basic. This unit now has the following. Unit Guard and plus two life. Oh, that's very nice. All the leaves have Unit Guard. Yep. Nature. Earth protecting us. Frozen Crown, Action, Leaf, plus two Basics, plus three attack. Cool. I love the, I love the fundies on these. Deep Freeze, Action, Leaf, Inexhaustible. When, this attach, when attaching the spell, place three status tokens on the spell. Discard the spell when it longer status tokens. Crab wear of all of them, et cetera. Is it blocking damage? Is that the idea? No. When this is attached to it, the unit is attached to it is considered to be exhausted. The unit now has the following ability. Thaw, side action, remove right. a status token. Okay, yeah. so you can exhaust something for uh, essentially three turns. What three, is that? Well, what do you have to play to that? You've got to have the leaves. Yeah. Why is nature the best magic? Uh, well, The druids were onto something. <clears throat> massive growth, one leaf, one basic, uh, can only be attached to a unit with an attack value of two or less. So you can massive growth a snake before it gets big. Uh, spell guard cannot be affected by opponent's spells. Fleeting, discard this at the end of the round. Not really worth it, but yeah. it's plus four, plus four. Yeah, so it's a moment. It's a big moment. Fade away. I'm just going to pass this to you. Let you read it. Tony asking, wait, are these the new cards? We have some of the new cards. We show them with a gold border whenever they, uh, whenever they come up. Just read that. Fade away. Oh, I love this card so much. Uh, basically, destroy a unit at the end of the round. So that's coming in. Spiked armor. It's uh, the answer to the snakes. I have to be able to get rid of that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, action, leaf, basic. This unit now has the following ability. Spike skin, where this unit is damaged by one or more attacking or countering units simultaneously deal two damage to each unit that is attacking or countering this unit. No. Reflections, there it is. We got a new one here. Wait, what is, hold on, let me, let me make sure I don't want to spike up these birds. Oh no, it's a leaf. Reflections in the water. Oh, we can't even, oh, we can't play this. Side, there's an old one, which we're showing, which is a basic oh, and a mask. Okay. It's got respark, but also it says as long as the spell is attached to this unit, it is considered to have no abilities other than inexhaustible abilities. Okay, I want to know how this one got changed. It's a side action now, and then either a mask or a time dice. Oh, time, wait, time? The yeah. turtle? The, oh, it's got the little hourglass, yeah. Oh my gosh. While this spell is attached to this unit, this unit is considered to have no abilities, including inexhaustible abilities. Fleeting, discard this at the end of the round. So you blank a unit. It's nightmares. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have time dice. It's either time or mask. Oof. Wow. I'll leave that to you. This I'm going to be the most annoying player in the world. <clears throat> this also got updated somewhere. There it is. Root armor. The original was a side action and a leaf. Plus two life, respark one. The new one is a side action and a leaf. Plus one life. Unit has the following ability, armored one. This unit is dealt damage, prevent one damage from being received. It would make sense that root armor would give them armored. Yeah. I like that. Logical consistency. Words. Bring forth action, two knives, plus two attack, plus one life. The spell can only be attached to units with the illusion ability. Unit is no longer considered to have the illusion ability. Wait, isn't that one? So would that one be getting changed? Do it we is. have any? Uh, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah, resummon. There we go, yeah. Illusion's out. Must be. Resummon. Yeah, it's just a basic symbol. Uh, or an action. A then you can action, exhaust. Ooh, this is a spell board now, instead of a alteration spell. Ooh. So action, exhaust, knife, mask, so we can't play it. But destroy a conjuration you control, then place that conjuration onto your battlefield. It's called resummon instead of bring forth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ooh, ooh, that can be so good so for you. So that come into play stuff is really good? Oh, yeah. Hmm. And you can like attack with it, exhaust, destroy it, bring it back in, get the ability, yeah, and have it to go again. That's good. Don't run the knife though. That's also, good. spiked armor was replaced by close combat. <clears throat> so let's just pull up close combat here. Uh, I'm gonna look at the difference. Okay, so it had all this spiked skin weird stuff, and now it just says, choose an unexhausted unit you control. 
deal damage to another target unit equal to the chosen unit's attack value. Then place one wound token or one exhaustion token on the chosen unit you control. Okay, take note. Look at this, snake man. Think about it. Just think about it. I'm going to the bathroom. Close combat. Choose an unexhausted unit you control. Deal damage to another target unit equal. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's got to go in. In the pile, at least. But it doesn't get plus two life anymore. And it's just an activation spell. Interesting. Very interesting. Let me see if there's any more of these in here before we get too deep. Nope, I don't think so. So the rest must be in the standard action spells. How's everyone doing out there? This is a process. I did not realize it was 4 o'clock already. Uh, we're literally just going through the entire collection, which is uh, crazy. There's a lot of cards out for this game. I was surprised when we got caught up to be able to start streaming how many expansions uh, had been released because I, I kind of stopped paying attention after the first couple due to production issues. K7 says, what is the difference between this edition and the original? Just changes in balance, or is it new mechanics and stuff? Uh, ba base like Boss has it uh, correct. It's less new mechanics and more reworking problematic keywords and making things simpler. All right. We're going to continue down the track. Did you find anything good for me? Not yet. Poison. It could be good for me, though. <laughs> it's a knife. Uh, after you take a main action other than pass, deal a damage to this unit. I like that. Oh. So I can attach it to one of your units, and then yeah. if I take a main action, you just keep doing damage to it. Burn it down. I l all the alterations is where this game lives for me. This is great. Power through alteration, side action, uh, divine, basic, plus one attack. Unit now has a falling ability. Overkill two. Mm-hmm. It does damage to Phoenix Born no matter what. Devotion, more divine stuff. Plus two at life, plus one recover. When one or more exhaustion tokens are placed on this unit. Uh, Etc. You may move one of those exhaustion tokens onto this spell. Cool. Very cool use for that spell. Too. Amplify a heart, which we could both play. Hello. Plus X, plus, plus X life, plus, plus X attack. Plex. Plex recover. Uh, X is the number of charm dice on this unit, so it really doesn't even work in the current. Uh, It'll get changed. We'll hold our breath. Holy relics, two angels equals plus two attack, plus two life. Check out those swords, though. I just love those kinds of things. Yeah. Body inversion, more of that creepy art. Yeah, this is a weird one with illusions. Action, two illusions. It's probably gone. Can't be attached to a unit that already, already has a spell with the word inversion attached to it. When attaching the spell to a unit that has the illusion ability, gone. See ya. Don't need it. All right, and we are now to the final stack of cards. We might make it out of here with a deck today. Zero Zion asking, what Phoenix Born are we building? I'm doing Saria or Soraya. And I'm yeah, doing the exactly. Reborn Maoni. Let's do the new Maoni. New, that, new Maoni. That new Seaside Raven is so good. All right, so we need to keep our eyes out for change names on these cards down here. These are all reactions. In this last stack. Yep. Okay. They are now, the stack here are the action spells, action discard spells, but they might not be here. But they might be. But they might be. So the first one we actually have an updated of. Ooh, strange copy. So wow. the original strange copy was Can an action that one? and two f masks. Oh my goodness. Don't they're both they're both long. When the placing a spell on the battlefield, choose the unit has in play. Play status token on the spell equals your unit's attack value. The spell is considered to be an ally. Of this, <laughs> whatever. Uh, the new strange copy, you can spend a wolf or a horse. That's good for you. It's both your dice. You may play the spell after an opponent declares attackers. Choose a unit you control to become a copy of a target unit for the remainder of the turn. While a copy of that unit replaces its title, printed abilities, and printed attack, life and recovery values with those of the target unit. If a printed value is X, use the current value of X. What's the new one? That was a new one. Oh. So it's a horse or a uh, wolf. Okay. Uh, you can only play this spell. Can you give me the gist of it? I attack, you play this spell. You, okay. co you copy one of my units for the rest of the turn. Okay. And it makes a copy of it right then. Okay. So 
while it's a copy, that unit replaces its title, printed abilities, and printed attacks. So one of your units becomes a copy of, of one of my units, essentially. Oh, wait a second, no. Ooh. Choose a unit you control to become a copy of a target unit for okay. the remainder of the turn. While a copy, that unit replaces its title, printed abilities, and printed attack, life, and recover values are those of the target unit. If a printed value is X, use the current value of X. OK. So you copy something. Yeah. I'm, I'm not interested. I'm actually surprised that they did this because it's a when you're attacking moment. Mm -hmm. So it's this like floating instance. It, well, these reaction spells, I think, are all going to have to be that, oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because they all react. But we, we just hate reactions as, a, as people. After they declare attackers, OK, a unit you control becomes a copy of the unit. All right, fine. All right, next up, it's we get too strange for me, Adrenaline honestly. Rush. It's a knife. You may play this spell when you would declare attackers, deal two damage to a target unit you control, and remove an exhaustion token from that unit. Mm -hmm. That unit may be declared as an attacker. I yeah, like that. That's a good card. Yeah. Crescendo, music note in the discard. You may play this spell after you have declared attackers, deal the damage to a target unit you control, to deal three damage to a target unit. Ooh, that's good. There you go. This is for you. Thanks. Shatter Pulse. I love this art. Two music notes and a basic. You may play this spell after a unit you control is destroyed. Destroy a target unit. You may change two dice on a player's active pool to the size of your choice. Yeah. D good good uh, stuff here from uh, Gregors. Said it would be nice to see individual card symbols in the bottom so that you could easily like see what goes in the original pre-constructed decks. Mm -hmm. So you could put them back together. Mm -hmm. That would be super helpful. Um, I don't know if it's happening, but it would be super helpful. It would indeed. Next, we get Sh Summon Shining Hydra, which is the Leaf and the Divine. Making the case for the Divine Magic, place mm -hmm. a Shining Hydra Conjuration onto your battlefield. So you play it, you get the Shining Hydra, uh, which is awesome. And it, when it loses, it, it takes damage, it gains, uh, you get the, the Hydra Head stuff going on, right? Yep, yeah. every time it takes damage, you get a Shining Hydra Head. I love that, that unit, yeah, that me card. Too. Mass heal, side action, remove a wound token from all units. If you have a divine die on its class or power side in your pool, you may instead remove one wound token from your Phoenix Born and all units you control. That's the old swarm. We get, see, if I was running, like, I would have a swarm pile, lots of units. I would look at these cards. That's where I was going with the old Mobley. Mobley. Yeah, that's where you gotta uh, go. Summon Archosaurus Mount. Mm -hmm. Action, side action, angel, leaf, basic. Is that a cheat code you just put in there? Yeah, up, down, left, right, right, left, down, up. You gotta hold L, L1, R1, R2, L2 while you're doing it. God mode and me twisted metal. That's what that was. My gosh, that is a reference that I did not expect. <laughs> twisted metal? Twisted metal? Yeah, dude, you gotta drive that ice cream truck around and blow <laughs> things up. Uh, anyways, uh, Nature's Wrath, action and a leaf. I love this art. Deal one damage to all units. Dude, come on. That's like my card. Get out of here. Yeah, this card's garbage. What a great, what a great piece of art. That's what I've never said. seen this it's, before. It's subtly amazing. It's not in your face. Some of the art's no. like, oh my god, that's fantastic. That's just like, oh, I'm cool. Yeah. Transmute magic. Side action, music note, and X number of basics. Oh, here we go. Select, select X dice in your exhausted pool and place them onto your no. active pool. Get it out of here. Don't do it. All right. Dice recursion. Dark Done. reapening. Reapening. Dark <laughs> reaping. <laughs> it's time. It's time for the dark reapening. Prepare yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Who can this, see the, the dark reaping? The hunger games, the reapening. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dark reaping. The grim reapener. I've just been reading for like three hours straight. <laughs> Story time, man. Uh, it's like we're playing Arkham without the game. <laughs> Uh, this is the game outside the game, you know? That's right. That's what uh, friendship is all about. Two, you just read to each other. Two knives. For hours. Uh, this was our childhood. <laughs> Destroy a target unit you control. If you do select four dice in your exhausted pool, re-roll them. No. Recursion. <laughs> Get no, out of here. Refuse. Cognitive dissonance. That's what I'm feeling. Uh, <laughs> one heart. You may play the spell after an opponent draws one or more cards or places one or more cards into their hand. That opponent discards three cards off the top of the draw pile, then remove up to three spells in each player's discard pile from the no, game. No, no. Man, these cards got degenerate there at the end. New ideas. These are awful. I have an idea. <laughs> uh, action or a side action and a music note. Draw two cards. Action or side action and a music note. Draw two. Well, I should put it in the draw pile, right? It's also got an inexhaustible ability. If you do, did not meditate this turn, after this card is discarded, unplayed from your hand, mm -hmm. you can draw a card. Sure. It's fine. 
Oh, I remember I played this deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sure did. It, it was not anything that I liked. Side note, what's going to be great, after we do this for a couple decks, ultimately, I feel like we're like, ah, I'm going to build this. You'll know. We're going to know these cards. Yeah, we'll know the cards. Not very long from yeah, now. not very long. Ice Trap, it's a leaf. You may play this spell after a unit with a life value of two or less comes into play. Destroy that target unit. Yeah. I can just do the hate on life two deck. You're going to play leaves? I'm doing that because I want I want my snake to gobble it up. You put a blocker down, I'm like, gobble, gobble, gobble. Oh, that's actually really good, yeah. Thank you. Let me do, you want me to do this? Here. Give sure. Me the, give me the next Here step. Go. We got to pass it around. You're, that's you're, there. That's all out of control. Golden Veil. We got a new Golden Veil. Great. Hey, you got to be excited about this. This has got Mayoni all over That's the, my favorite. Look at that art. See the little Gilders down there? So she's got a snake on one side and Gilders on the other. That's how you run a kingdom right there. Yeah, you got to make sure that the Gilders don't see the snake, though. They yeah. don't know what's up. Yeah, that's true. They're being tricked <laughs> into gilding. What's she doing, man? She's like uh, spirit bombing that place. She's gilding it. That looks amazing. That's not gild. Oh, that's a shield. There's a, uh, it looks like there's magic energy coming like, at her. It's like and a, she's like shielding it. It's with like a golden a, veil. A golden veil, yeah. Yeah, a golden veil. Interesting. But look at those gilders. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, that's really good art. I like it. Uh, okay, so the old version, the original, one uh, leaf, one heart. Play it when an opponent uses something and cancel it. Let's look at the new Golden Veil. New Golden Veil. Only costs a snake. Uh, cancel it. Yeah, so it just changes the cost. Yeah, hey, hook me up with those, because I can't let you lock down my snake. Also, I love the flavor text on this. What's it say? No. <laughs> I have an action. Sympathy Pain. We got a new one of these, too. So let's look at 1.0. Oh, we got a lot of uh, horses are being integrated here. Used to be two well, hearts. when these came out, the horse didn't exist. Yeah, that's true. Well, the horse did, but the horse magic didn't. Yeah. Horse has been around for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, as yeah. As far as I know. So ever since Poseidon made it, which I have said before on this stream, Poseidon made the horses according to Greek mythology. It was something about trying to make the fastest creature or something. I can't remember. And it came from the horse? Obviously failed compared to the peregrine falcon. Uh, two hearts on Zippity Pain. Is, is there not a water creature that's faster than a falcon? I feel like it's got to be... Probably acceleration-wise, like sustained speeds. I don't know. That's pretty difficult. Because it must be way nothing. I haven't run that race in a long time, you know. Fast, what's the fastest of, animal on the planet? Yeah. Is the horse... The, the fa cheetah's the fastest land mammal, obviously. I think the swift or the falcon is the fastest bird, particularly falcon when it's diving. Yeah. Makes and sense. Then, uh, I don't know where the, the sea compares, but there's some stuff that's moving really fast in the ocean. I mean, Terrifying. Like fast. fish are like yeah. crazy fast. Uh, sympathy Pain. Let's take a look. 1.0. Play it after you have received damage to your Phoenixborn. Deal three to a unit or Phoenixborn. Nice. The new one is either a snake or a horse. So is, it a, is it a spell? Yeah, same thing. One die less. Play it after one or more wound tokens are placed on your Phoenixborn as a result of an attack. So this is actually really important. Um, attack, spell, ability, or dice power in opponent controls. So I guess they're actually they're making it opponent controls because what you used to do is hurt yourself and simply pain your opponent to death where they couldn't play the game. That was fun. Deal two damage to a target unit or Phoenixborn that opponent controls. So your opponent does something to hurt your Phoenixborn, and then you get to do two back. Way better than any time your Phoenixborn takes damage, deal three Let me to see your it. opponent. So much better. Like, not better in the sense that it's more usable, but better in the sense that it's not breaking the fundamental mechanic of the game. Because I know that you guys may have a hard time believing this, but there were some degenerate deck builders out there, and they would have cards that did one damage to their Phoenixborn, and they would play a bunch of Sympathy Pain. And, oh, I, uh, I want that, by the way. Direct damage, right? Or the heart? Is that how you play it? No. Horse or snake? Snake's the, the upgraded heart. Do you, do you want it? No, I don't want it. We I haven't. don't have any need for Sympathy. Oh, they put the horse in there because that's sympathy magic. And yeah. it's called sympathy pain. Makes sense. Yeah. Can't hate that. Redirect. We got a new one. Wow. Still a bizarre crossbow scared man on the on the art here. Um, oh, because his arrow is getting redirected. That would be very creepy. Look at him. Yeah. It's like, one, one heart here. Play it when your Phoenix board would take damage and you have at least one unit. Deal it to the unit instead of the phoenix born. That makes okay. sense. Redirect. Um, what's the new one do? New one is a snake instead of a heart, so it's a little bit harder. Uh, same thing. It's just the wording has changed to where it's not saying a bunch of things hmm. that don't need to be said. You running it? 
You know, I mean, you should, right? I mean, generally. It's going to be bad for my snakes when you do that. Oh, yeah, I think I've done that in the past. Like, yeah, I'll jump this nine damage onto this random unit. It doesn't matter. Okay. Consider it done. Got the sympathy pain already. Final cry. Looks like we have a new final cry as well. 1.0 final cry is a goat. Play it when you uh, unit is destroyed. Deal two to a unit or phoenix born. So it's like sympathy pain for units. What's this final cry up to? Being creepy. Reborn final cry. It's the same. It says after a unit you control is destroyed instead of when a unit you control is destroyed. So the timing has changed slightly. Uh, and that's it. Guilty damage to a unit or phoenix born when that happens. Literally changing when a unit to after a unit. Isn't that fun, though? Because that's actually extremely relevant. What, mm. What's the framework for when a unit is destroyed? Nobody knows. Are you moribund? What is this? Probably. Thrones 1.0? Instead, we know after a unit is destroyed is after it's gone to the discard pile. It's gone. It's gone. Don't need to confuse anybody. I don't need that. I would. When would you run that? Just a direct damage deck, I guess? Probably. So you... Summon Sleeping Widows, we've got new versions of this. Two knives on the 1.0 version. There's a wolf that is erupting with spiders, and it's unnerving. That wolf looks so nice, even though, of course, it's dead. Uh, you may play this spell when a unit you control is destroyed. Place two Sleeping Widows on the battlefield. Okay. What's the new one? You may play this spell after a unit you control is destroyed. Place two sleeping and widow conjurations onto your battlefield. They're changing when to after. Yeah, and it makes sense too, because like if I had a unit out and it was being destroyed, but it's not destroyed yet, and I play this, I might be in my battlefield cap. But now the unit's gone. Yeah. So I can I can do it. And the sleeping widow for reference, by the way, sleeping widow, two attack, one life, zero recover. Love it. You know, hold on, let's think about this. What's my battlefield at? Five? I you, don't You're not I, running the knives. I can't afford that now, yeah. Shadow counter has been changed to shadow strike. 1.0 version, mask and a basic. Play it after your Phoenix Born receives damage from an attack. Deal six to a target unit your opponent controls. Ooh, that's beautiful. It has changed to Shadow Strike. It is now one die less. It's a wolf instead of a mask and a basic. After an opponent declares attackers rather than after your Phoenix Born receives damage, deal three to a target unit that a component, opponent controls that is not attacking. Way different card now. Used wow. to be you take damage for, uh, from an attack, you deal six to something, and now it's after they declare attackers, you deal three to a unit that's not attacking. Nice. And it's a goat instead of a mask. Goat instead of a mask. So that's, that's right. going to go in my pile. No, it's not a goat. It's a wolf. Oh, yeah. owl. Easy to be. Uh, do you want it? you want it not? Oh, you know, what do you... I just don't know when you would play this. I mean, I know when you would, obviously. Uh, no, I'm going to wait. Chaos uh, Monkey says a lot of the reaction spells are now a single power die. So if your opponent doesn't have the power die, which is the highest symbol, you know they aren't able to react. That's so true. That's 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 the kind of thing that reduces cognitive load a lot, right? Like if I look over and yep. I see that you don't have any power dice and most of the cards aren't playable, that's really nice. That's really helpful, yeah. Choke! One knife. Play it when an opponent would use a unit or Phoenix Born ability that is not inexhaustible. Cancel it. Do you want that? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants that, right? You're not having fun. Final Cry. One Goat. Yeah, we've seen that one already. Redirect, we've seen already. Call to Action. Ooh, look at that. This is the one that has the ninjas. She's got the ninjas. Uh -huh. uh, one Knife. No, one uh, Snake. It's like a knife with a uh, snake body. You may play the spell after an opponent declares attackers. Remove one exhaustion token from a target unit you control. That's sneaky. It allows you to unit guard an additional time unexpectedly. Mm hmm. Uh, is this the heart? The heart die is the snake yep. die? Yeah. The old charmy. Charmy charm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this because a surprise battle advantage raven blocking is pretty cool. Uh, remorse, a heart and a basic symbol here. We don't have a new version though. Okay, that could be either of us. You may play it after an opponent takes and attack a Phoenix Born main action or attack a unit main action. This wording's going to get changed. Deal two to a Phoenix Born. The player that controls that, Phoenix Born, must discard two off the top of their deck. If they cannot, no. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Just say no to Mill. <laughs> Seeds of Aggression. Uh, heart, or I'm sorry. You know, the snake looks like a heart. It's confusing. Snake and a horse. Choose a target unit you control. 
choose a target unit your opponent controls, they deal damage to each other. Oh. You want that? It can't hurt. Exhortation, next up. We got a heart, we got a music note. Choose two units you control for each unit. Add the other unit's current attack value to its attack value for the remainder of this turn. Interesting. That could be really good for you, but you're not running the, the music notes. Freezing Blast, mm. next up, two leaves. Deal two to a thing, remove two status tokens from a thing. You don't want that. I would like it, but I don't have the leaves. Mist Typhoon, I remember this thing clearing out all of the Mist Spirits, which is kind of ironic. Deal one damage to all opponent's units, you may draw a card. Has a mask and a leaf, neither of us really are going there. This, even if this was just for direct damage, that's pretty great. Yep. I mean, it's two for two, which is not phenomenal. But it may you... as well just turn both of those dice to frogs and use their ability, right? Yeah. It's faster. I'll just it's put it faster. There. Transfer, coming up next. Action, spell, heart, basic. Move a token from a target player's non-Phoenix-born card to another non-Phoenix-born card that player controls. So you could like... You could transfer status tokens most yeah. of the time. Or exhaustion tokens, mm -hmm. which helps a lot. Allow your Phoenix-born to block twice. These are all just good cards. That's the problem. Fundies. I don't know what to do. Refresh, a heart and a basic. Remove all exhaustion. I remember this from a card. Unit. Don't mind me. Molten gold. Three wound tokens on a unit or a phoenix born. You know it. Sleight of hand, <laughs> a wolf, and a basic. Draw three cards. I'll take a look at that one. I'm Interesting about Molten Gold, though, right? Is that two frogs is basically two unit damage. Yeah. So there's only one more, but you can hit a phoenix born. That's what's you up. You can hit a phoenix born. Yeah. That is what's up. Steady gaze coming up. Two masks. Place two exhaustion tokens on a target unit. I'm going to take that. Uh, we know this is going to be a game about me just locking those snakes down and you not trying to sneak past. Uh, Bound soul, one uh, knife. Search your discard power for an ally. Place it, put it in your hand. You know that's fine. I mean, it's interesting because the ceremonial die one up is the same thing. But you don't you take the damage. damage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Out of the mist, wolf and a frog. I don't think either of us can run this. Deal damage to a target unit. Draw a card. Combined, we could run it. X is the number of units you have in play. This is the swarm swarm pile. Yeah. We'll make a swarm pile. Oh, uh, look, dude. You can imagine a pack deck too, right? Yeah, Where it's like you have sick. a bunch all of all these like, raptors mm -hmm. and stuff. And the wolves and whatnot. Call upon the realms. Choose three in your active pool to and change them to a side of your choice for a main action. One card, change three dice versus three cards. It's interesting. It's interesting. Hidden power. We got a mask. We got a new version, too. Select two and you're exhausted and place them into your active pool on the side of your choice. New hidden power. 2.0. Ashes Reborn version says draw a card. Change five in your active pool to a side of your choice. Again, we're not bringing dice back from the dead. I like this card. That's crazy. And it's got me on it. Me. Seal, uh, one mask, one, one heart. Choose a ready spell on a, a spell board, place an exhaustion token on it, and each other copy of that spell. So you can just lock them out of a conjuration. <laughs> you got a big pile over here. And finally, open memories. Not finally, there's these after this. Heart and a basic, you may search your draw pile for one card, put it in your hand, shuffle your draw pile. I mean, this is going to be a great card. But again, I feel like you should build a deck without that, and then maybe add it at the last second. Mm. Let's see what the deck does before we start I mean, searching it and making it weird. You a know? card and two resources to search is a lot. It's a lot. When this could be the card. like any, It could be a card you actually want to play. It could be. It could also be any card. Sometimes you have one ofs in your deck, you know? Do you guys run one ofs? Anybody run one ofs? I don't. You don't. All right, we're going to this is the end. We're almost there. Blood chains, action and a knife. Choose the unit you control, destroy it. Place X exhaustion tokens on a target unit. X is the chosen unit's life value, minus the number of wound tokens on that unit. So remaining life, exhaustion tokens onto a unit. Okay. I like that. You like it because I do oh, it's got ceremonial. Don't need it. Freezing blast. Uh, we seen it. Look at that. Transfer. Seen it. Yep. Call upon the realms. Seen it. Open memories. Seen it. Meteor. Not seen it. <laughs> Is that meteor? Meteor. You know meteor. What I mean? Like action. A slim gym? Two wool. Two lions. Deal two damage to all units. For each unit, place 
one exhaustion token on the unit unless it's a control player spends a resource. That's incredible. <laughs> wow, talk about just, yeah. You know, That's so, the reason to go divine right solve there. Solve the board. Heal, side action, angel. Remove all wound tokens from a target unit or two wound tokens from a target phoenix board. Imagine that. Kneel, a heart and a divine. Place an exhaustion token on each unexhausted unit. What? Divine is bringing the heat all of a sudden. Don't mind me. Might be changing my entire life. Change Psyche. <laughs> action, converted. heart, and a basic. Remove an exhaustion token from a target unit or place an exhaustion token on a target unit. That's definitely in. Would you want to, would, Are we going to fight over this? No. Yeah, I'll be fair. You can okay. play it and try to get Dispel, around Dispel. Action. Basic. Remove two status tokens from a target card or choose a target alteration spell. If that spell is a conjured alteration... Creation spell, return to its owner's conjuration pile, otherwise shuffle it into its draw pile. Right. So you what, you remove an alteration, basically? Yeah. Mind probe, action, and uh, heart. I know what this card it's is going to do. It's got Kylo on it. Mind probe. It's going gonna, it's gonna to discard cards from hand or from deck or whatever. Choose a target opponent to reveal the top five cards of their deck. Choose one of those revealed cards and remove it from the game. Return the rest top Hard of the pass. deck in any order. Hard pass. Shared sorrow, music note, and a basic. This is a beautiful card. Discard a card from your hand with a magical play cost of one or more. Search your discard pile for another card with a magic cost of X and place it into your hand. Deal X damage to a target unit. X is the magic play cost of the discarded card. Interesting. So a two, you discard a two cost, do two damage, and get a two cost back from your discard pile. That's pretty good, man. It's, it's for you. I'll put it in there. Enlightenment. I'm never going to run this. Action Angel Basic. Remove an exhaustion token from a target card. It's in my divine pile. <laughs> it's, gr it's growing. Reclaim soul. We already saw this, right? Yeah. I did. Rally the troops? Nope. Uh, Actually, we didn't see reclaim soul. Right, reclaim really soul. Clear. Basic and two knives. Choose a target unit. That unit deals damage to equal to its attack value to itself. The owner of that unit selects a number of dice in their exhausted pool up to the unit's recover value, rerolls them. Rally the troops. Choose X allies you control with one or more exhaustion token on them and place them into their owner's hand. Remove X wound tokens from your Phoenix Born. Okay, hey, that's pretty cool. Not bad. All right, guys, we did it. It's the full It's the full card pool of all Ash's cards that have been released in the past. What, would, what was the run, 2015 to? Eight, 19. Did it go all the way to 19? Two decks a quarter. Every yeah. three to four quarters. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty incredible. That's not, I mean, that's not too much to catch up on. That's a lot of content, though. It's a lot of content. It the deck building it, is unbelievable. It actually right won't now. have the problem that I think a lot of non collectible card games have up front. Yeah. Which is not enough cards. <laughs> that's true. That's actually really true. Yeah. Because, you know, the uh, so many of the LCGs, uh, you know, they come out and then it's like 20 years before they have the card pool to actually have a good experience. Not a good experience, but like a, you know, a tremendous experience. As compared to a collectible game, which will have like 180, 260 cards, like all at once. So what I think uh, we do is we put these piles together, and then we'll probably come back uh, next time to next play. week and, and trim it down, and then we'll get to start playing, and we'll start tweaking the deck, just like we do with Flesh and Blood. Yeah. you got to learn the game. You have to actually learn it. You can't fake your way through it. You, you know? can't. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start going through some cards real quick. Can't, I'm going to see if I can can't, get can't there. can't help it. So summon Gilder. I have to play the Gilders. Okay. It's just what's going to happen. You're going to pull your half two cards out? Yeah, that's where I start. It's like, what are the cards? I'm absolutely, unquestionably, this is going to be in the deck. I'm pretty sure I just pigeonholed myself into a horse deck. <laughs> You're horsing around. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do the Gilders, and they... There it is. Um, require a leaf. I'm also doing the Silver Snake. Because you got to. Yeah, there's the ravens. Which requires a lee, a snake, and a frog, which is here and here. So we're building. And then I can flex on the ceremonial. I'm going to make, let me just look. I'm choosing my spell board right now. That's what I'm looking at yeah, first. Yeah, choosing it. This is the next step, right? Yeah. You tired of people saying this is the way yet? This is the way. No. Still good. Yeah, me neither. Dark Presence is a slot, potentially. And then Magic Siphon. This is where you have to actually make some choices. Oh my gosh. It was all fun and games until I had to choose four. Or, yeah, four? I get four spells? Ugh. 
Empower is definitely going in. That's the one where I can play status tokens. I need I need a spell. So how, what's my spell board here? Where's Manny? Where's she at? She got she five, is. I think. Five. So I'm definitely one slot's going to be summon Gilder. One's going to be summon Silver Snake. And this is it's pretty crazy actually what, how quickly this is going to happen. Um, one of my five slots is going to be in power. So I'm at three of my spots. And this yeah. isn't how many of them are you going to yeah, run. It's already happening. I need one of my spells to be the thing that lets my snake sneak by. So a, a sneak by. Yeah, you, don't only, want... you only have one. You can only have one. Yeah, you're, you're right. And I, I, you do the one that I, I only need one better. copy of it, too. Maybe two, but we'll come back to that. The one I suggested. <laughs> Oh man, there's so many options. Oh my gosh. Hey, anybody who's out there who goes through a process like this, it's fine to be totally overwhelmed at this point. If we hadn't been doing this for 50 years combined, uh, I think we would be super overwhelmed right now. Like, like mind-blowingly overwhelmed. Well, so over just choose your spellboard. Start there. Overwhelmed, and we've played this game too. It's not like we're new to the game either. So check this out. It's kind of cool. I have uh, cards that are kind of doing similar roles, and it's really just about choices. So the card Steven recommended to me earlier was Confusion Spores, which I can basically choose a unit that unit can't block. Or I have Hypnotize, which has Silver Snake on it. And I can choose a unit. It costs me more to do it, I though. like that that's a deciding thing. And yeah. it has Silver Snake on it, OK. Uh, but I can choose a unit, and that unit can't be blocked, which is obviously more universally so good. So more expensive, though. <clears throat> Come on. Uh, I mean, it'd be great if you could attack twice with that snake. You can. Do you have an unexhaust? A bunch of unexhaust thing? cards. Okay, well then it's better. Uh, so, but those two cards, one of those two is going on my board, but I'm not doing both, right? No. So same thing here with Frostbite and Drain Vitality. Frostbite uh, regularly is action, exhaust, leaf deal of damage, which instead of having to have the frog to be able to do that, you can actually do a damage with a leaf side, but you can also do it to a Phoenixborn. If it's focused, you can actually spend basics to do that. So like mm. if I have two Frostbites out, I have two instances of a basic die being one direct damage to a Phoenix Born. Why are you doing that? That's, that's, this is how I play. But why? That's just, I can't explain myself. <laughs> but that actually knocked out the, all these cards, because I, I have my spell board now. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's very relevant. I'm about to do the same thing. Yeah. You were kind of just stacking your cards up wherever you I want. I got a lot so. of cards. Yeah. Um, OK, well, you know, it's easy for me to just go horses, honestly. And that's something that I find interesting. Actually, crazily enough, this isn't, I'm, I may have to recant. See? Look at this. I didn't realize this. This stack of cards? is all summon conjurations that could work for me. No way. So they're all gone. So like, literally, if I, if I want to have these three things out, I, I can't have any other conjurations. Get them out of here. So I'm just going to put them over here in my maybe pile. That's crazy. Look, look, that's over half the cards I pulled out. Yeah, it's too many. <laughs> that's amazing. It goes like immediately, right? Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, look, the deck is here now. Yeah. So now I definitely, I need allies. I need lots of allies because I only have snakes, one snake and my gilders. Well, this is just classic Mayoni, right? Yeah. Snake and gilder. Snake. And then this squall. I mean, look, I've, I've only got four slots too, man. So I'm, I'm here. I get one more. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It is crazy. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> it seriously is, dude. Uh huh. Weird. I like the spell books so much. I really do. On the spell, but it's one of the unexpected unit you control that is not attacking. If you do add two to the attack value of the unit you control. Huh. Guys. Guys. Huh. Seriously. Wait. 
So with Squall Stallion, I might be turning divine. Squall Stallion, can it just continue to get pumped by card draws? Or does it only happen once? It's the remainder of the turn, right? Or is the turn just my turn? I take a turn, you take a That's turn, That's your I turn. Take a turn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now what I'm I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna divide by magic type on all the rest of my cards. Yeah, Metroplex has a has an idea too. Um, you can run more than what your spell board holds. You just have to meditate what's already there first, and then so like, yeah, you could. It's kind of a you can prepare for different kinds of opponents with your first five and whatnot. This game is actually way more technical than people want to think it is. You can get really good at this. You feel like a wizard. And suggestion for resummon. That's pretty cool. What is, what is your summon? Is it an active action spell? Did I put it in my stack, maybe? Because, yeah, pray over and over again would be just busted. Man, then, then the deck starts. So I'm going to leave it here, man. I, I got to, I can't. I can't keep going. I need to know what my fourth slot is on my spell board. I gotta know. Gots to know. I've got to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's actually a unit. That unit deals one damage to a Phoenix born. You remove one token from that unit. Huh. Dark Presence is good. Damage to a Phoenix stop quite a bit. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, this is all so good. Uh. <sighs> Nuts. Hmm. Am I going to run these Mind Fog Owls? It kind of works nicely with the uh, with the Raven. Oh, everybody! Uh, remove all status when you come to play. Place one status for each of on units. A target. No, I'm not gonna. All right, cutting the mirror spirit's gone. Salamander monk. They're just little weenies. No, I don't need that. Sal's. Don't need them. False demon. Uh, no, I don't really need that either. Hmm. I like all my units. I don't want to use them for join the hunt. In the Did two shadows get changed at all? Do we have any idea about that? That's like a corset card, right? The one uh, that makes something an illusion? I don't know. So maybe it maybe it's sticking around. By the way, I think I might be going to Vine. Good. It's about time. It's about Which time. Which makes me regret a lot. Okay, this makes sense. I'm into this. I think I'm into this. Ancestor spirits are going in. Nightshade Swallow, that's good. I had forgotten about that. It's right here in front of me. Okay, to Shadows isn't core, so we assume that's going to be changing, so I'm just going to wait on that. Okay, attacking or countering, destroy it, it's received damage. Maybe we should go with the Swallow, the Nightshade Swallows. Is it Nightshade Swallow or Ancestor Spirit? That's what you've got to know, you know? Oh, you remove it from the game once this happens. I get it. So you discard a card, you move a die, put an Ancestor Spirit in, then you can ex immediately exhaust it to exhaust something else. It goes away, and you can do that five times. That's interesting. Let's go Nightshade. All right, I'm on it. We got some birds. We got some horses. 
Birds and horses. End of story. Yeah, it's like a pasture out here. Okay, done. I'm done. I'm calling it. I'm out of here. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Hold on. I'll be there quickly. You're, you'll probably have one done. One. Oh, you're, you're not done with your deck yet? No. I'm done. I got my spell board, and like that's it. I can't do anymore. My brain is melted. I do have this entire stack, though, that's now gone. Yeah. So that's that, that, this is gone right now. That's quick. And then I've got to look at basically, yeah, these are all things that I didn't have. So these are all gone, too. So really, now I'm down to these cards. Which is manageable. Mainly allies and some action spells, basically. Maybe I could just do it. I think you can get there. Fade away is in. And then I'm going to be looking at allies that have good come into play abilities, because I'm going to be putting them on this mount. Um, so let's take a look. Move one wound from a target unit onto this unit. Or move one wound or status second from this unit onto a target unit. Interesting. Good. Also good. Flute Mage, you're so good. River Scald. Uh, River Scald, you're so, so good. <clears throat> Why did I choose all the good cards? Now it's super hard. Temple Elder is not going to work. Jungle Warrior, I'm not going to do that one. Um, Rose Fire Dancer is like the quintessentially great card. So you're in. Let's see what I'm at. Maybe I should do whoever it was that was doing it. Um, yeah. Whoever it was talking about the Beast Warrior and the Beast Mage, it's super janky, but it's the kind of janky that I'm really into. 30 card decks, right? Is it 30? I'm going to go get some sleeves. I think it's 30. So I can start sleeving these proxies. Of one or less. Attack life. You know, this beast mage is super good too. Mm hmm. This hollow is too, honestly, just too gross looking for me. Mm hmm. Battle Seer is good with the horses, particularly. How many allies, guys? What, what's too many allies? How many allies is too many? 10? Is 10 the right number of allies? Yeah, some conjurations. So, like, my battlefield is what? Five? Battlefield is five. You know, in a perfect world, I would have some conjurations out. Linky Rat really into the uh, music suite. I just, I don't, if they're going to be hopping on the horses, I think this, the River Scald makes sense. Oh, it all makes sense. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Beast Mage, you're great. The Rose Fire Dancer, the, this is the hardest stuff. Um, is the Anchor not any good? I don't know, a zero one? Okay, you're out of here. You're not, you're not hitting heavy enough. I feel like, but Battle Seer, Philip, that's a good point, but Battle Seer and River Scald work so well together. You declare Battle Seer as an attacker. You draw a card that triggers River Scald, Harsh Melody. Place an exhaustion token on the unit. Place wounds, uh, three wounds on another unit. That's super good. Um, 
Let's go Rose Fire Dancer, Flute Mage, and River Scald. Move one wound or side from tagging it. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna cut the string mage. We'll cut the battle seer. And we'll cut the battle mage. We don't need battle. Okay. We get 30 cards. Mm -hmm. So so essentially 10 stacks. Oh three, yeah. Are you doing it right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fade away for sure. I hate that card. Four. <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. It's the literal worst. And then... Um, there's a draw card. Crescendo or new ideas. These are good. These are good. I think Crescendo's going to go in. Oh, there's that flash archer. Shindo's in. Boom. Done. Okay. Hidden power. Nope. Draw a card. Change five. Boy, that's good. I'm going to go with three drag because I think it's a great card. It's crazy how quickly your choices actually get limited. One, two, three. Well, flesh in the water, oh, great. <clears throat> I'm not going to do Shared Sorrow. I'm not going to do Seal. Steady Gaze is pretty great. Slide of Hand, don't need. Dude, this Holy Knight, that's what actually switched me to Divine. Oh. So Manny's ability to do damage to a unit equal to a unit's attack. This unit has a five. Mm -hmm. It also cannot be affected by spells, abilities, or dice powers. The Including you, yours, yours or mine? Just your opponent. Just, just mine. So like, fade away as an example. But like, me having a big unit, because I have Hypnotize, and the problem I'd always run into is I would get my snake to five or six, and yep. then they just deal with the snake. And this is kind of like a snake in disguise. It's a snake in disguise. <laughs> Shout! Watch yeah. out! All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's, I'm going to choose one card to have a one of to start. And what is it going to be? I'm going to have one. Maybe I just do one nightshade up top. Do I want to summon multiple stallions? I guess that's the question you got to ask yourself. Do you want to summon multiple stallions? Always. I think so, right? I, I think these are they're great. They're three, they they work so well with my ability. I'm gonna do one nightshade swallow. And then if I have one other card as a one of, then I'm in a good I'm in a good spot. Maybe I do include that like one battle mage. <clears throat> the spots get tight. Boy, don't they? Okay. So I actually am starting to think just differently. I mean, the opponent would use a Nice power that targets you, your draw uh, cancel the effects. So vanish as a cancel, that's cool. This battle. You can play when you need it, would receive one or more and spell if you have already played or actually promote one damage to that unit. Shuffle this into your draw pile. It's not bad. Ooh, new ideas, right? Yeah. Uh this card is card I'll plead from your hand, you may draw one card. And yield flash archer. Okay. Okay. All right, you sold me on new ideas. I'm in. Side action draw to you. And then you're saying, uh, Philip, you're saying. Uh, 
to draw with the power die, too. What's the power die that draws with the sympathy magic one? Power die? But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I need that like one of just that one of like magic that's just like ah So my are you are you your first five yet? Because it's kind of important. I'm almost done building my deck. It really changes everything. Let's see, maybe there's a good like first turn. Uh, well, side of hand is a pretty good first turn card. Seal is a pretty good first turn card. It's pretty amazing how similar some of these cards are, but how importantly different they are. As an example, there's Refresh, which is an action, a heart, and a basic. Remove all exhaustion tokens from a unit. So they get a yeah. bunch of exhaustion tokens. It's really good. There's also Enlightenment, which is an angel and a basic. Remove an exhaustion token from a target card. So you can remove one, but it can be any card. Then there's Change Psyche, which is a heart and a basic. Remove an exhaustion token from a unit or place an exhaustion token on a unit. They're so all different shades of it, right? It's the same cost as Refresh, except for it removes one or places one instead of removing all. It's also the same cost as Enlightenment, except for instead of a heart, it's an angel, but it can only remove one. And it, but angel? it can be from any card. It's like, that's crazy. OK, I think I'm there. One, two, three. So this is a three stack. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I currently have eleven on the stack. I've got to cut one. Or I could do like two and a one, one and a two, etc. One, two, three, four. Twelve, thirty-six. I'm a six over. Oh no. Those are staying. Okay, we're going to cut redirect only because I'm going to see if I need it or not. So here we go. We've got it. It's sleep time. It's always an exciting time. Yeah. And we've got to get a little proxies in here. I feel like I'm really on the cutting edge here. I think I'm playing a new game. We made it. And then eventually we'll get very good. Eventually. It's going to be a, a time for me. I also usually put my conjurations in a different color sleeve, like a white. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, some of these uh, divine cards just blew my mind. They're just awesome, right? Yeah. How can you not just be attracted to them? Well, we did it. We got our decks built. Yeah, there it is. That's crazy. But like the actual deck building, once we filtered through, is way faster. It's super fast on the filter. Yeah. And now it's literally like tweak, play, tweak, play, tweak, play. Now, if we were really wanting to get good, we would build a few other decks that are doing different things. Yeah. And we'd have a circuit. But what we're going to do is just jam against each other and see what happens. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll obviously be going through the deck building process again. But I don't know if we'll do all cards on camera again. I don't imagine we would. I think at that point. And we also, I kind of want to wait and get more Reborn. Yeah. There will be a point where we'll just get all the Reborn cards. We yeah. might even be able to like preview them, right? Yeah. So that I, that's would be where, excellent. like, even now, we, we picked out cards for the other decks we were going to play. And then it was like, well, we have new Phoenix Born or updated versions of these Phoenix Born. So we're going to explore that. It's crazy. 30 cards is very small, especially when you get to pick your first five. Boom, 30. Nailed it. I don't even need to sleeve these. Uh, well, I guess I do, because I've got, I've got new, new proxies. 
but not now. All right, we did it, man. We Congratulations. did it. We built decks. We built our first real Ashes decks with a little bit of Reborn in the middle out of the entire card pool. That is not a small task. What is it, 130, 230, 330, 430, three and a half hours? And we probably... Reading every single card, and then we ended with two decks perfectly built. Yeah. Beautifully built, if you will. Probably the best decks ever built. Literally. In ever. the entire game. Ever done. All right, guys. Any uh, any questions before we get out of here? Ashes, Ashes Reborn. But so we'll come in next time we stream, and we'll be doing uh, gameplay. Should we'll be next Wednesday. Playing some games. Crossing our fingers. We'll keep up with any new Reborn cards that have been previewed since the last time that we streamed. Super healthy subscription numbers for Ashes Reborn. So huge shout out to everybody out there who has subscribed. If you're still on the fence, uh, the Reborn upgrade pack will be the first thing coming through the sub. So if you have old Ashes cards, you should definitely get on uh, for that. If you don't have any Ashes cards, you can buy old products and then get the upgrade pack. If you don't have any cards at all, you can just get the upgrade pack and get like a ton of new cards to explore. Um, either way, core set, either old core set or new Reborn core set is likely the best way to start. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are waiting and they're just gonna get in on the Reborn core set and then subscribe after the upgrade pack. Uh, that's also a perfectly valid option. And uh, we we expect to to see this one, what, November, December, probably, around yeah, the holidays? Yeah, people ask in the chat. So current expectation is November, December-ish. Um, we'll know more as we get closer, but there should be continual like reveal of cards from Plat Hat over time. We'll keep talking about them and playing them. And then uh, to guarantee you get that uh, upgrade kit, sign up for a subscription. Easy yeah. as that. And it also, it just helps us, obviously, tremendously uh, in a number of different ways, uh, directly financially, but then also just projecting and kind of understanding content schedules and whatnot. But then secondarily, it's super helpful for Plaid Hat to just know, like, general demand for the game. That's one of the great benefits of subscriptions that Plaid Hat being uh, very hip and with it are happy to take advantage of the fact that, like, we can, we can just be like, hey, here's how many people are subscribed to this. And they're like, oh, well, then we'll probably make this many. And then it's like, well, that's much easier than trying to guess the whole time. Um, so if you want to uh, sign up just to help the whole chain out, which is what we're doing here, um, that's also just uh, a good reason to do it. Uh, so we appreciate any any and all support. And uh, Ashes Reborn, man, it's happening. It's crazy. That, that was a Thinking good deck building session. Concept from March and Gamma, having a conversation with Colby to now, it's just pretty surreal that it's all uh, happened. And to all the Ashes community out there, I'm just so happy to be here and be able to do this and bring this one back. Uh, well, well deserved. Zach, take him out. All and right. Click the buttons. Hit, hit them indeed. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for sticking with us on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're new to deck building or new to this game in general, um, that's the process we go through to build decks. And then next week we'll be going through the next phase of that, which is old jam games. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to have my short list of cards here, my pile, right? And then I'll probably make some tweaks, make some tweaks. And after we play for a whole day, I'll go look at all the cards again. Yeah. And I'll want to just make sure, did I miss anything? Especially because I made the like late stage Divine mm -hmm. switch. I'm sure there were cards where I was like, ah, I'm not playing Divine. Get rid of them. But honestly, it's crazy. These decks are tight. Yeah, we'll start looking at, uh, I'll start actually searching a database and saying, oh, I need more exhaust. So I'll search for the exhaust keyword and see what I can find. Yeah. So if you're interested in watching us actually use these decks, tune in next week. Uh, stay safe out there. And we'll see you next time.